Welcome to the July 20, 2021 County Commission meeting. We have Mr. Keith Betcher here. Yes. Hi, sir. If you come forward and hear me okay. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you, commissioners and staff, for your commitment to governance. And thank you to all in attendance for participating as well. To paraphrase Albert Einstein, one knows that one exists for other people, upon whose smiles and well-being our own happiness depends, and for the many unknown to us whose destinies we are bound by ties of sympathy. Every day I remind myself that my inner and outer life are based on the labors of others, both living and dead, and that I must exert myself in order to give as much as I have received and am still receiving. As we begin today's meeting, let us embrace these words for the things we accomplish and decide in this room will have a direct effect on all the people of this county and many more. May we focus on the community at large and may we resist the temptation to make these decisions through a zero sum lens. May we use our shared values of integrity, reason and empathy as we search for equitable solutions to benefit all in our community. May our actions here lift one another up and motivate all of us to step forward with kindness and compassion, not fear and hatred. For a community is only as strong as the disadvantaged among them. May we remember this and let that guide us as we conduct the business of government in these chambers and represent them in our daily lives as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very nice words. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have some minutes that need approved. Motion to approve Lober. Motion by Commissioner Lober. Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Commissioners, before we move forward, if you wouldn't mind, 
um, uh, entertaining a motion to table item I-3. Motion second. by Commissioner Tobias, second by Commissioner Lober. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. We're gonna move into resolutions, awards, and presentations. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. There we go. Am I on? Thank you. Uh, Susan Kowalski and Donna Botten, are you here? Yes. Come to the podium, please. And I'll read this, and then I'll give you guys the floor, and you can enlighten us. Oh, gosh, we've got more than just the two of you. Great. Commissioner, I'd like to go ahead and introduce uh, Rachel Richardson. She's a circuit administrator for Circuit 18. Good morning. Okay, great. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Yes, Let me read this and then I'll turn over the floor to you guys. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for what you do and for being here with us today. Whereas community corrections is an essential part of the justice system and whereas community corrections professionals professionals are responsible for supervising offenders in the community. And whereas community corrections professionals are trained professionals who provide services and referrals for offenders, and whereas community corrections professionals work in partnership with community agencies and groups, and whereas these professionals provide services, support, and protection for victims, and whereas community corrections professionals advocate community and restorative justice, and whereas these professionals are a true force for positive change in their communities. And now therefore be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida does hereby proclaim the week of July 18th through 24, 2021 as pretrial, probation and parole, supervision week, clients, employees and communities, power through partnerships. And encourage all citizens to honor these community corrections professionals and to recognize their achievements done, ordered, and adopted in regular session this 20th day of July, 2021. Madam Chair, I move to approve this proclamation. Second it. Motion by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You have the floor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, good morning. My name is Rachel Richardson, and I am the circuit administrator for the Department of Corrections here in the 18th Judicial Circuit. With me today is our Deputy Circuit Administrator, Mr. Charles Cologne, and Ms. Susan Kowalski from the Brevard Reentry Center. I also want to thank Ms. Donna Bolton and Ms. Kowalski for um, organizing this event for us today. Also today are uh, just a sampling of our dedicated and professional staff that we have working here in Brevard County. Thank you, Commissioner Smith, for sponsoring this resolution for pretrial probation and parole week. I am honored to have a few minutes to um, before you all to recognize the tremendous effort that the staff of Brevard Probation and Parole do on a daily basis, sometimes working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, monitoring the 4,000 plus felony offenders in Brevard and supporting the mission of the Florida Department of Corrections. Our entire staff, to include our support staff, our certified officer staff, our supervisory team, work each day to provide a continuum of, of services to meet the needs of those that are entrusted in our care. Throughout the pandemic, our staff here in Brevard and statewide did not skip a beat, continuing to make home visits, conduct walkthrough inspections, full searches, and multiple drug testing operations um, throughout the whole time. They improvised and they overcame many challenges to ensure that we fulfilled our mission and we continue to do so on a daily basis. Our staff work hard every day analyzing their cases to make the necessary referrals to the numerous social service agencies here in Brevard that we work with, including referrals to the Brevard Reentry Center that Ms. Kowalski heads up. They work day tirelessly to assist these probationers meeting the, uh, connecting the services with the needs that they all have. Our staff also monitor and report all non-compliance to the court and follow through with all enforcement of conditions. In addition to all of those duties that they do on a daily basis, they facilitate self-improvement programs in our offices. 
We have thinking for change classes. We have an employment specialist that works every day with uh, employers who are willing to take a chance on offenders on supervision. Most recently, we piloted a program in the Brevard Melbourne uh, office called 24-7 Dad, which adds a parenting skill component to our other in-office programs that we have. As I mentioned earlier, our staff work hard on a daily basis in the community, making thousands of contacts, not only with law enforcement and offenders, but with other agencies, family members, employers. And we work to create a safer community by partnering with local law enforcement with compliance initiatives, where we all go out and we make sure that uh, the offenders are in compliance and there is not contraband at their home, uh, making sure the sex offenders are complying with the conditions of supervision. Our goal is to reduce victimization, uh, safer communities, and an emphasis on the premium of life. Our agency vision is inspiring success, transforming one life at a time, and our staff do this each day with the efforts they put forth in assisting these probationers to become successful. I commend and applaud the hard work of our dedicated and professional staff. Their commitment is outstanding to the citizens of the state of Florida and Brevard County, and I do thank you all very much for taking the time to recognize these wonderful people today. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. So much for what you do. Thank you, sir. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of like our unsung <laughs> heroes. Most people don't have any idea how hard you are. We are kind of a thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving into consent agenda. Can I have a motion to approve consent? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Zonka. Do we have any cards, Madam Chair? We don't, sir. Okay. I would have got that. Thanks. Second by Commissioner Tobiah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. I have one public comment card, Ms. Sandra Sullivan. Sandra Sullivan, South Patrick Shores. So I've been coming here for about a little over two years talking about the view development that is going in that impacts um, the adjacent preserve that was a partnership between the county and Satellite Beach. I've also talked in the past about how there was a, <clears throat> a requirement by the state for both the county and the city under the Pelican and Hightower Park Preserve agreements with FCT to cap the density on the barrier island. This was done because of a deficiency of a study that was done by Brevard County and the Eastern Central Regional Planning Board. Our community is requesting your help in the interest of public safety. According to the state, Pineda Causeway is critically deficient for evacuation in the event of a hurricane. Both Patrick Air Force Base and residents of 32937 use Pineda Causeway for hurricane evacuation. Imagine for a moment you do nothing in response to this information and when we have a cat four or five and children's lives are lost as a consequence of critical evacuation deficiency made worse because you allowed density increases that are not allowed, how would this sit with you? 
The bottom line is we have a critical deficiency that resulted in FDEP requiring the city and the county to cap density, to not move density on the barrier island. And the city's regard for this commitment now puts lives at risk. I hope you appreciate the importance of evacuation off of Barrier Island is the state's prioritization of this matter, especially when coastal area evacuation has been prioritized by the current legislative session. Um, the governor has, uh, has uh, uh, put $640 million, the largest budget ever, towards resiliency. Um, the, <clears throat> to do a quote from uh, his site, a component which outlines principles for hazard mitigation and protection of human life against the effects of natural disaster, including population evacuation, which take into consideration the capacity to safely evacuate the density of a coastal population proposed in the future land use plan element in the event of impending natural disaster. Well, these, these were put into place back in 1999 by the county and the city. And these parks also are for all of Brevard County residents. Now, it's very sad that in the last year, I have been trying to get an appointment with my own commissioner, and I cannot get an appointment. And I hear that you guys are accessible. When I wanted to meet with all of you when City of Satellite Beach hired a lobbyist, I could not, other than Mr. Lover, talk to any one of you. Thank you. That's the other clock. Thank you. Okay, we're moving into item H1. County Manager. Um, uh, Commissioner, this is an item from the Sheriff's Office for um, grant of the Byron Memorial Justice Grant Assistance Grants. Uh, it is multiple grants for more than one year. We've given pretty broad language so we could take care of the um, these grants and catch up because of a uh, coronavirus uh, uh, multiple years. Okay, I have a motion to move to approve by Commissioner Lober, second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 5-0, item H2. Good well, morning, hello. commissioners. <laughs> How are you? Uh, H2 is a public hearing for a substantial amendment to the county's uh, fiscal year 1920 action plan to acknowledge receipt of CDBG coronavirus funds. Kind of Move to community. approve. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Lober. Second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 5-0. That's a really good program you have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item H3. H3 is the annual action plan for our home and CDBG programs. This is for fiscal year 21-22. Um, this was uh, brought to you back on July 6th. This is the second and final public hearing for the program. Move to approve. <laughs> Can we just let staff finish the explanation of the item for the benefit of the public at sure. least, please? Thank okay. you. And I have a motion on the table, sir. Okay. Um, this action plan is actually the sixth year. If you recall, our individual yearly action plans support our five-year consolidated plan. This one is unique because of the coronavirus. It's the sixth year of our five-year plan. And so that's because HUD allowed a, a waiver for the entire nation regarding the, the action plans. We will be completing a new five-year consolidated plan this year, which will then be brought to you for approval. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. A couple questions. First, do we have any comment cards on this? Uh, no, sir. I, I would be on it with you. Perfect. And then just a question for staff. Is this, was this a late add-on to the agenda, or has this been publicly noticed for some time? It was not late, sir. It's, it's been on the agenda. I believe we put it on before the date that it's due to the county manager's office. Okay. Are you aware of anyone that had indicated they wanted to come to speak on this item that may not be here for any reason? We, as a department, did not receive any public comment. Thank you. Do I have a motion by Commissioner Lober? Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Zonka. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Item H4. Okay. 
Ms. Kathy. Good morning, Madam Chair. This is an ordinance to uh, rescind two economic development Avalorum exemptions from the county's program. The first exemption is for New Space Center LLC. It was a project that was to be constructed in the city of Titusville. However, it was never constructed. Um, the uh, owner moved out of state. They're in Colorado. And the city of Titusville has also revoked this exemption. The second one is Midwest Dental, also known as Project Rainbow. This is a project that the county and the state um, got um, was in together with the uh, state qualified target industry qti um, this is a eight-year exemption for 80 percent when the company adds um, 30 jobs they were to add 10 in, uh, in 2019 10 in 2020 and 10 in 21. however the qti program allows for a company to extend the employment exemption or employment creation for a year in 2019 the state did exempt or push the um, the state requirement for the jobs to 2020 um, we had not gotten the annual report until yesterday we did get their annual report yesterday they did not add the 10 jobs in 2020 however they said the reason why was because because of COVID-19 and the shutdown um, the state will give them an exemption for that year due to COVID-19. So if the board does um, not go ahead and approve this part of the ordinance, then the QTI would remain in place. If this is rescinded, the QTI is gone. The state's QTI program is, um, has been eliminated. Motion approved. Okay, motion by Commissioner what, what? Loper. If I can add one more point that I think might be important for the board. Um, they did have $3 million in the tax. Uh, the uh, property appraiser did notice, uh, notify that they did complete the completion of uh, the, the capital investment for the project. So uh, they t they under the ordinance, they would actually qualify at this point for the exemption. So if you, unless we remove and I believe staff's recommendation would be to leave them on at this point and this is only information that came to light yesterday afternoon and early this morning if you include them in the ordinance and remove them they will lose the, the QTI and will not be able to get it back even though they have made the three million dollar investment in Palm Bay so uh, I think the board might want to consider that okay Commissioner Zonka I was just going to suggest similar because you said that the state gave them that. I don't. I don't want them to lose lose their QTI status. So, I would support an ordinance that didn't include uh, Project Rainbow. I guess or the dental. I'll okay. go ahead and modify the motion accordingly. Okay. So modify it to. You want to withdraw to that motion and, and and then change it to something different. If you some prefer, I do it that way. Yeah. I'm happy to do it that way. A little cleaner. And okay, I'll so I'll, I'll go ahead and withdraw it. And then Commissioner Zonka, do you want to make the new one? I make a motion to approve the first rescinding of the first item and with the, you know, leaving out Project Rainbow. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 5-0. We are on item H5. Good morning, commissioners. In this agenda item, staff is requesting that the board set the fiscal year 2021-2022 proposed millage rates. Um, and in accordance with guidance given by the board during the February budget workshop, all millage rates have been established within the Brevard County charter cap limitations. And additionally, the aggregate proposed millage rate of 5.4446 is a 1.45% decrease from the aggregate rollback rate of 5.5249. Uh, therefore, according to the requirements under Florida statute, uh, this proposed, these proposed millage rates would not be advertised as a tax increase during the final budget hearing. Thank you. Kind of hoping Commissioner Tobias jumps in on this one. This would be one you like. Thank you. And I'm certainly not watching <clears throat> the Amazon uh, fellow just landing as we speak right oh. now so he's at 550 feet and everyone's safe so oh, the market wonderful. will be decent today I'm happy you're not watching. yes uh, thank you for all the work no, staff wonderful. has uh, 
done on this and and bringing it in on uh, Amazon? Where, where we don't have to yes that as well <laughs> bringing it in below uh the mark where we need to advertise for a tax increase is certainly positive and other local governments uh don't have the benefits that, that, that we do not only in staff but but that uh, not a tax increase. So I greatly appreciate all the work done. I'll certainly be supporting this. Mr. Tobai, I think you just landed it right on your screen. Yes. That's yes. wonderful. The screen that he's not watching. That's wonderful. Madam I Chair, wish I thought of that and taken a little break and watched it. Yes, sir. I'm going to pretend that was a motion. I'll go ahead and second it. Okay, I have a motion. Mr. Tobai, yes? Yes. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. We are moving into item I 1. Commissioner, I'll go ahead. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, this is a request for a temporary rent reduction in payment for the complex cafes uh, here at the uh, Vera and the uh, Moore Justice Center. So uh, we're requesting the board consider and act on a request by Mr. Stephen Powers, owner and operator of the cafes. Uh, Mr. Powers is requesting a temporary reduction from 1200 down to 600 in rent payments through December 31st, 2021. The assignment of lease was negotiated and agreed upon with very specific terms. Those included a forbearance of rental payments um, until June 30th, 2021. And on July 1st, he made a payment of $1,200. Uh, Mr. Power states that he's faced continued challenges, specifically COVID-19, and is making efforts to improve the quality of food and food choices. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Smith. I'll Can second his motion. Okay, because you had a light, so you're, you're good? Uh, his motion okay. actually answered my question. Okay, Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have some questions and certainly some comments on this. Uh, with your permission, Please, may I sir. start with questions? Uh, uh, Mr. Powers, thank you yes, for showing up. Uh, yes, I'd like to apologize that uh, Mary Bowers told me I didn't need to show for the first one. It wouldn't, so that's why I wasn't here. She said I it completely wasn't. understand. Come, so, coming forward and asking for thousands of dollars in rent reduction, I don't think it's worth your time. Uh, I say very facetiously. Uh, you purchased uh, the business in February 2021, is that correct? Yes, sir. Were you, in February 2021, uh, the world was aware of COVID. Uh, were you aware of COVID? Yes, sir. Great. At the time, um, you, ne you negotiated for a four-month moratorium on rent payments. Is that probably due to COVID? Um, I was told by Mary Bowers and Paul that um, I was just to assume the lease that was in place and that was already negotiated and in place. I didn't ask for it. So that suspension of um, rent was under Paul. And when I applied to purchase it, Mary said you apply to assume the lease in place. And so then you would have to come back and have another board meeting if I wanted to change the lease in any way. Okay, I'm trying to, so you would have, I'm, I'm, I wasn't expecting that answer. So you would have purchased it without that four month moratorium or is that not correct? Um, at the time, yes, It'd be before I found out some other problems. Okay. And, and finally, uh, are you personally running this or yes. is there's no sublease or you're not no. receiving any payments from anyone on, no. on this? I'm there almost every single day, open to close. Thank you. Man mm -hmm. Madam Chair, before yes, we make motion, I've got some points. Is that oh, okay? Certainly, sir. Or are there cards on it? You know no, that? sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Powers. Um, well, I've seen some crazy stuff come before the board, this probably ranks right there at the top. Uh, this business owner purchased this with the understanding uh, that he would receive six months or four months of rent-free uh, space and uh, now is coming back to us. At some point, this nonsense uh, has to stop. At some point, we have to say no. County employees can drive the, and I looked this, 0. 0.426 miles to Blaze Pizza and get better service and get better product. And here's the question I have for the board. If Mr. Powers comes up here and asks for uh, some sort of gift from taxpayers, what is stopping every other business that has a contract with the county that pays us from getting any type of uh, rent, rent relief? And, and 
the question is, is they would probably have a better case because uh, they purchased or had a lease that uh, happened far before uh, the severity of COVID. So if this board does come to the decision that we provide uh, this type of relief, and I don't want to call it relief, I want to call it a gift because that's what it is, a gift uh, to Mr. Powers, I ask that every other uh, organization or business uh, that has a contract with the county asks and receives the similar uh, type of again gift uh, because I, I just don't think that this is fair this start is going to start an absolutely horrible precedent and I certainly don't want to be uh, any part of it but if we are I think we need to be fair to absolutely everybody so I'm going to be voting again. I'm going to be voting no for this. And should anyone else come up here, I certainly would encourage them to do that. But I will also be voting no uh, for them as well, out of fairness. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Lober. A couple comments. Um, first, I may have to disagree with your um, conclusion that Blaze Pizza is a better source of food. I will tell you, the last time I went there, I had a pretty bad experience. Although the time I went there prior to that, it was pretty good. Um, Aside from that, this to me is one of those things where it's hard to draw a bright line rule and say yes or no in perpetuity. I do agree that we have to be fair with folks, but I, I think this is something that we need to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. I think there are enough unique factors with respect to this business, with respect primarily with, to, to where it's located, and the clientele that it disproportionately serves, uh, that it, it deserves some sort of special consideration. Um, and lastly, as this is something that's in the same building as our D4 commissioner, since our D4 commissioner is on board, I, I give that great deference and great weight as well. So uh, if there's a similar applicant from D3 and you'd prefer that we not support it, I'd be inclined not to support that if, if that's your position with respect to a business in D3 in a government building. But since this is in D4 and a, not, not only a government building, but the building in which the D4 offices are in, that, that does carry some weight with me. Mr. Zonka. Did you receive any, if you don't have a problem answering this question, did you receive any kind of COVID relief from the state or from any other organizations? No, when we applied, we found out that Paul did not have proper paperwork filed and prop legally things weren't done that I had to pay for. But then the time we got Paul to get aboard and get his um, act together, we were already past that time. Okay. I would, if I can address your concern, um, the money that I'm spending is a permanent fixture into the building. I've spent thousands of dollars on fixing the electrical. That was bad. Even though it did pass inspection, it was unsafe. I'm not just asking for relief so I can get a jet ski or a boat. I'm putting it back in. I replaced all the freezers. I replaced the uh, breaker boards. I've, I've done a lot of work to replace things that um, is my responsibility, but I just didn't want you to think I'm up here just asking because I want to spend money on other things. M Madam Chair. Um, I had a problem a with the that. ventilation. Um, the ventilation doesn't work that great. So I called out the cleaning crew that does it professionally. And when they removed the screens, that's all Paul put up there was the screens. There is no ventilation. So that was $4,500 to improve things that, you know, that need to be done to make it better. People can sit in there and not have smoke and and things like that. So it's, it's going to improve the facility. And when, if I leave, if I die, get hit by a bus, it's always going to be there. It's something that I can't take away. It's not like a refrigerator or things like that that I improved on. Didn't you and do I still a, need to improve. Oh, you're on still. Didn't you do a complete inspection of the facility before you agreed to purchase it? Yes, yes, we did. We did an inspection, but when when you purchase a restaurant, you really don't go into the ceilings to see that they actually really have a true vent when the vents are there. Um, and far as the electrical, what it was is the plugs were some of them were broken off, and there was a pin in there, and you wouldn't know unless you go to plug something in. Um, and just things like that that I've been improving on. It passed inspections, but it still isn't the safest thing in the world to have broken components inside your electrical. And I'm not asking anyone to feel sorry for me. I just want this gentleman to understand it's, it's, that's where the money I've been spending. If I didn't have to spend that money on other things like that, I wouldn't be asking. Okay. 
the food I feel is very high quality. We have pulled pork, rotisserie chicken, fresh mac and cheese. I mean, the food's cooked every day. I ran Rocco's Tacos Tequila Bar in Fort Lauderdale, and my food's way better than that. Yes, so, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had things to say, but uh, Commissioner Lober does it much more eloquently than me. And he basically said what I was going to say in a much more eloquent form. So, uh, but I will, I will say that um, reports that I get from my staff and other people that partake of your restaurant say the food has Im improved immeasurably. So I thank you for that. Um, the other thing I would like to say is um, you are a small business. We've, we, the, Commission, the county, the state have been over backwards to try and support small businesses. You weren't able to take advantage of any of that money that was given to other businesses. You're not asking for the world. You're still willing to pay half, and it's for a limited time. I don't think it's a stretch for this commission to give you that helping hand, and if it helps you get past January 1, I'm glad that we could do it. And if it doesn't help, well, then you're like, too many other small businesses that are going to succumb to the effects of COVID. But I think we owe it to you to, to make that effort. So I'm going to vote in favor of this. Commissioner Tobaya. Thank, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Dr. Zonka asked the uh, questions about the, whether the inspection was done prior to, uh, yeah, so, so uh, those, those, those considerations I'm sure were taken in by the savvy business owner. So uh, my position holds. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. I'm going to call the question, but before I do, I did have requests that you would start serving salads. <laughs> uh, we do. We have uh, 12 different types of salads. Okay, well, just so you know, yeah. that's what they said. They wish you had more salads, so um, I just thought I would tell you. Um, <laughs> okay. thanks. We have uh, avocado salads, pork salads, chicken salads. I think they're um, just like warrant green leafy salads. There's a lot of them that are like trying to lose weight. I just thought I would throw it out to you. So <laughs> I'll have it tomorrow. Okay. I promise. It'll be it, whatever tomorrow. you want to do. I'm just take that you. under advisement. You might get some more sales from the. Okay. But anyways, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. No. Passes four one. The commissioner to buy it in opposition. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we're moving into item I two county attorney. I just wanted to uh, ask you guys this. I think after sitting through them, I, I pretty much know where I'm settling. There was definitely um, three that rose to the top, two that rose to the top, and in my heart, I, I know who I would like to pick. So I was thinking that what we could do, I got an idea here, is that I got a, a little thing made up, if y'all are willing to do this, that instead of going through everybody's faults, because they were just wonderful people, that we might just like maybe circle our top choice. And then if we get um, a, a clear indication, we can just kind of know who we're doing. If we get two twos, then we can have a discussion on, on the two people that rose to the top. If we get a, a, a two and then everybody else gets threes, we're gonna have to rate them. But what do you guys think about that if we just do this and then we can kind of see where we're landing and then have a discussion? Madam Chair. The second. Well, Good I, have, idea. I have a different idea, but... Okay, Commissioner Lober. I'm, I'm fine doing that as far as circling the top choice, but whoever we select, I've, I've given some thought as to specific language for the motion rather than just naming them. We have to vote, so, for sure. Well, I, I don't want to just vote to name that person. I think there's some safeguards that we can put in place regardless of who we select. You most certainly can do that. So if we can, if we can revisit that after we go oh, about this, I'm oh, fine yeah. with this. No motion at all. We'll just kind of yeah, get fine. kind of a feel of it. Okay, so let me give you all So we're these. just circling our top choice at this point. Yep. And then, Thanks. and if we get 5-0, we're done, right? Well, yeah. I, I would like to say, even if we don't get 5-0, are we? We'll, we'll, we'll still make a motion. Yeah, oh yeah, we still have to have conversation. Yeah. But um, this, well, this way, I know there's a couple I wouldn't consider, so maybe that will just kind of eliminate conversations with those as well. Do you want me just to hold on to this when I'm done, or? Did I make a comment? Yes, sir. Please I would like to say that I, I thanked, I would like to thank all five of the people. They're wonderful. Came. And uh, I don't think we'd miss a beat if we hired any one of them. Although Great. I do consider several to be better than others. Uh, I think each one, each and every one of them would do an outstanding job. 
what I don't, what I really don't want, and I'd have to ask Eden about this. I would like to have our votes kept private because we I just can't. we can't do that. No. Okay, I'm not going to finish then. Well, if um, you, if you guys would rather, if that comes up, I've got all kinds of ideas here. I have a circle too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of where I was going with. If we if we circle two, okay, um, the sheets then, will be public. And Still then public. and then then we can. I was I was even thinking of maybe if we do that and we have two people that we would invite. Thank you. Those two back for additional questions. Okay. If anybody agrees with that, if you have. If something else has come up that you've thought of that you wish you had asked or would like to ask these two, uh, I see Commissioner Zonk is kind of making a face, so she doesn't like that idea. I've just been through this process before, and I know that if you want honest answers from candidates, it's hard because they are attorneys. You know, but <laughs> no, I say that because no offense, Commissioner Lober. No, I say that because because we want them to follow the letter of the law, and like judges, they're not going to opine on positions. And you put them in an awkward, you pit them against each other, and you also, you know, you really bear them. You know, we've, we've had the interviews. For me, I, I had additional questions from one candidate because the interview, we got talking about something else. I called the candidate and asked the questions because I, I needed to know mm. X, Y, and Z before I even considered them. So for me, I, I you know, we, we had the interviews. We're accountable for who we hire. They're an attorney. It's not a political position. And I just don't want to make a spectacle. And I don't want them to be uncomfortable to get drilled by us. And, you know, there may be a commissioner up here, too, that would want to show off. And I don't like that idea either. And I don't, I don't, I just feel a little uneasy about make, putting them in a position because they are professionals. There's one person on this list that absolutely horrified me. And if that person made it to the top two, I, I would have no problem. I would, I would be obligated at that point to, to bring up our discussion and to, and to tell them exactly what I thought of them. And I, I don't think that that's even fair to them, even no matter how much I was offended by the, the interview, I still wouldn't want to do that to them because they are professionals and they do have to apply for another job if they don't get this one. You know what I mean? So I, again, I have multiple concerns and those are probably the top concerns that I have with making a public issue of it. I'm not looking to make a public issue. We, we would be meeting with them in private and I, being that they're professionals and we're professionals, I would hope that we would ask professional questions and not try and grill them. Yeah. Um, but I did, I thought you be that as may, um, you know, I'm subject to whatever whatever the rest of the board thinks. I'm good either way. One name, two names, I'm, I'm why okay. Why don't, we, why don't we try to circle two, and then we'll see if we can get two that we can have a discussion on then. Or if, if, if the commission... I don't know if you guys already know, but you want to circle two, circle one? I've got all kinds of options here. Just a, a couple thoughts. I'm fine doing the circle two if that's how you want to do it. Um, I will say, though, that a couple of the candidates that applied out of the short list or the, the second short list after one of the six withdrew their name from consideration had asked me um, if I knew whether they would have a selection today. And I, I think the goal is to basically to, to get this process finished in a reasonable amount of time. I think they would prefer, at least from the two that brought it up to me, to have an answer instead of going through additional rounds. I will say, though, uh, if the board wants to have private interviews again with the top two, I'm not going to oppose that. I'll support that motion, but I'm, I'm ready to go today in terms of picking one. So however you all want to do it, I'm, I'm fine to go along with it. Okay. I think he might have a light on. Oh, now he does. Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm kind of, I don't need to throw a wrench in the system, but I, I kind of think that this should be uh, open to the public. I, I, I think that we had our private uh, uh, questions, and I think that uh, as we go through this interview process, uh, we went through these subsequently, but issues might have been brought up that weren't uh, from one candidate to another and follow-ups, you know, weren't, weren't given that opportunity. I think any time that we open this up to the public, that's something that certainly benefits discourse. Also, uh, as Commissioner Lober will test, uh, the legal system is confrontational by nature. Sometimes. And I think by, uh, I mean, w I, I think we kind of want a bulldog uh, that is looking out not only for the board, but for the uh, county as well. And I think that if we brought a couple candidates up here, 
we ask, ask them some uh, pointed questions. I think that that may uh, bring some clarity. So uh, in, all honest, in all honesty, there's a couple that I'm uh, sw uh, deciding between right now, but I, I'm not in a position, uh, some questions were brought up at one in interview that I'd like to ask the second person in, in all honesty, vice versa on that one. So, Someone um, that you're considering? Two. There's okay. two that okay. are have have risen to the top. Okay. Um, there's one that I'm definitely not comfortable with on okay. this one, uh, but uh, I don't know that uh, ha making a decision today versus two weeks from now. We talked about transitional period, uh, and uh, that certainly wouldn't overlap on that transitional period that uh, Ms. Bentley was speaking about to get them uh, up and rolling from from that position. So I don't know what harm. Uh, there would be uh, in in doing that. I don't know whether or not we'd all have the same people, but uh, I'm certainly not ready to make a decision today without follow-ups. And I applaud the initiative that uh, Dr. Zonka made on that, but I, in all honesty, uh, I did not. But you'd be fine bringing top two up. I That so would be... So that I, would, would be, I don't want to do all five again, I, so you I, top two. I 100%, I, I okay. would only want to, in okay. all honesty. Okay. Thank Mr. you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Zonka? I would just say, you know, and with all due respect, you know, we had our opportunity for follow-up, so at least me personally, I'm comfortable making the decision. There was two, you know, maybe three that ro rose to the top, two primarily that, you know, are sort of separate from that third one, so I'm comfortable making a decision myself. I, I think I asked all the questions I needed to ask. I think I got a good gauge for their personality, and I think, um, I think you know, again, I, I've done, the, I've been through this process, and worked with multiple attorneys over the many years I've been in office and in, in, in different governments even in different situations. So I'm comfortable making a decision and I'm okay either narrowing it to one or two, whatever the board, the majority of the board desires, and then narrowing it down from there if need be. Okay, Commissioner Smith. I can pick one today, I can pick two. I don't want to have two candidates or three candidates or whatever here for us to grill, right. um, yeah. that could lead to an embarrassment. And these people, these five people, they're all professionals, but they're still human beings. Yeah. And if one of them were to get offended, they would never tell us. Um, they might feel a question that they might feel is demeaning, but they would never say that. But being human, they're going to remember that. And I don't think us casting a pall upon a professional in public would serve any purpose other than to embarrass them, and I don't, I don't want to have that happen. So we, I can, I can pick one or I can pick two. So you why guys, don't, why don't we start with picking two? I agree. And we'll let staff tell us what we come back with, okay. and then we'll, uh, we'll wait a little while, and then we'll have a discussion okay. on the two, and we'll make a decision okay. then. Are we supposed to put our names at the top yeah, of this? Five minute break. And yeah. then we'll give it to the clerk afterwards okay. so it can be included. Way, yeah, we'll take a five minute break. So if you put your name on it, circle two, we'll hand it to um, our county manager. Oh, okay. And then he'll pass it off to you. All right. And I'm going to give a five minute break. We'll come back here at 9.50.
Moriarty was actually my second choice because I was very impressed with him as well. And I like the idea of having the outside. Um, I personally would recommend Morris Richardson. And it's not because, you know, he worked for the county attorney's office for 10 years before he went to West Melbourne. It's because I liked his answers and he follows the letter of the law. Um, he's been in county government for a lot of years. Um, I, I remember him in the days when he handled the magistrate stuff for the city of Palm Bay, and it was always done with perfection. So again, I'm, I'm a little biased in the fact that I've, I've seen him over the years, and I've, I've watched how professional he is, and I've seen him against even what his own board may have wanted, but he always followed the letter of the law. So that I go off of experience. So I would, I would actually uh, would support Morris Richardson if if it was if you were asking me to choose between the two. So, and I, and I don't like doing this because I think Abby is amazing and wonderful, and she answered a lot of my questions very well. So, you know, it's an experience thing for me, and it's and it's history because I don't I didn't know him personally. You know, there's no personal relationship there. I just I've seen him over the years, always act in a professional manner and always handle things even when they were uncomfortable by following the letter of the law, and that's what I want. I don't want, you know, and that's not, I'm not saying, of course, that the other candidates like that. I'm just saying he's demonstrated it, and those are the examples that I have, that he's, he doesn't go with the politics, he doesn't go with always what's popular, but he always follows the letter of the law. So, again, I, I, I would be in more in favor of Morris Richardson as our next county attorney. Thank you, ma'am. I'm gonna jump in as well. I, I, that's um, my choice today as well. I think Miss Abby interviewed remarkably well I I think she's done a great job here I she was like my second choice actually she was my first till we continued through um, mr. Richardson I asked him some very very hard questions and he just he just gave champion responses and he's got a good track record he's been at the county before that's what was tough is it's good having someone inside because they're used to it but then it's better having somebody outside because they got some fresh eyes when they come in so it, Mr. Richardson had kind of had the best, best of both worlds because he trained under Scott Knox here, and then he moved out to, to do the job he's doing in West Melbourne. So um, my choice today is going to be Mr. Richardson as well, although I do enjoy Abby tremendously. And actually, I liked um, Mark as well. I thought he did a great job as well. So that's, that's kind of where I'm landing today, but we'll, we'll see what we do today, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm probably not going to help this procedure much because I've worked with both Abby and Mars. Mars was here for the first two years I was in office, so I saw him work in person, and I've been watching Abby for the last couple of years and, and noticed that she's a remarkable individual as well and very astute. They have two different types of personalities. Um, both of which I think lend themselves to doing a good job in this position. I will say that when I was chair back in 17 and I knew that Scott Knox was going to retire in about nine months, I asked Morris to my office and presented him with the option of coming back to the county at that point in time because I thought it would be, he would be a natural to fill in and, and step into the position after Scott left. And he said, well, let me think about it. So he came back about a week later and he said he appreciated the thoughts and the comments that I made. But he said, you know, when I left and I interviewed with West Melbourne, one of the questions they asked was, what if the county turns around and asks you to become the county attorney and he gave them his word that he would not do that that he would give them at least five years in this position and he said furthermore two of my kids go to school and I can see their playground right from my window and I'm close to home so he said this is just a good fit and I'm not ready to leave so kudos to him for for taking that stance Abby has gone above and beyond from my perspective. I, I know that she did a really, really good job in the um, Ellis case, and she's working with us today. Uh, so for me, it's a difficult decision, and I've thought about it a lot over the last four or five days. 
I was impressed with two of the other candidates too, which I'm not going to mention, uh, and one candidate I just dismissed out of hand. So this is a very difficult decision for each and every one of us. The good part is I don't think we can pick a bad candidate. We're not going to, whoever we pick today, we're going to benefit. So it's just a, it's an eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and I'm not doing that to make my decision. But uh, we could do that, and we could still win. My, my position at this point in time, I'm leaning slightly more toward Abby than to Morris. So um, how's that for mixing up the, stirring up the pot? Okay, I'm going to let Commissioner Tobio weigh in first, Commissioner Lober. We haven't yes, heard from him yet. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Morris is, uh, Mr. Richardson is a, is a great candidate. Um, I, I was uh, very impressed with the reports uh, I got back. Um, and and it, it was a toss up in all honesty. My concerns uh, with Morris were things that most people would probably consider very positive. Uh, Morris had uh, decided to run for judge at one time in his life, which is a great uh, accomplishment I imagine for uh, any attorney, um, and uh, but I, I don't know if there's that fit at the at the at the county at the county level. Um, as as you're aware, uh, judicial nominating commission is there's always uh, availability there, and I'm I'm kind of leaning towards someone that um, ha started uh, here and 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 will continue on. Uh, for a great deal of time and the other the other thing I'm looking at um, is what this does for internal candidates in the future we have uh, Abby who's done a fabulous job even when I didn't want her to do a fabulous job as the attorney you mentioned the Scott Ellis case I was completely on the opposite side of that one hundred percent still am on the opposite side still will argue that that was a technicality uh, but you know what she, she, she ended up winning that one and sometimes you have to take your uh, hats off, uh, especially you know when you're on the opposite side of that. So uh, working under uh, Miss Bentley has got to be very, very difficult. Uh, she, she, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she funny. preps us and does <laughs> such a fabulous job. Uh, certainly with my office uh, in particular, I imagine Especially she does it. with yes, you. Yes, not, with not me. Your with with me. <laughs> Dealing with me is extremely. Um, so, th so the fact that someone has to follow in those footsteps is is uh, a tremendous space to fill, and having someone in there that um, clearly works well with that. Um, again, uh, I, I'm I'm certainly leaning towards Abby. Uh, what I was hoping for is to put them both up here. Uh, at the same time, I, I think that that um, I, I think that that adversarial uh, uh, point of view certainly would be something that we would gain. But uh, Commissioner Smith, if you're not comfortable with that, um, I, I, you know I understand. I certainly like where you're leaning here, and this is the great thing about Sunshine. I don't think any of us had any idea where. Uh, we were going, and then Commissioner Lober throws a uh, you know a curveball there with a memo, which is 100% legal, but changes the dynamics uh, of the whole situation. So uh, I'm I'm good joining uh, you, Commissioner Smith, uh, on this one. Whether it's with the uh, with the uh, motion made by uh, Commissioner Lober uh, or not, but uh, I'm certainly leaning if. I was going to make a decision today with uh, with with Abby on that one, so that's that's where I stand. But my hits on uh, uh, Morris were not hits; they were definitely. Um, I believe that he uh, has greater aspirations based on past performance uh, or past decisions, and uh, I wish him all the best. But I think um, right now, absent of any further information, I think Abby's the uh, fit that. that would work best in that well, department. Can I? Okay, let me let me just, yes, you're, but let me go through online. But let me throw out a, a thought. Um, we, I think we definitely have an ability to vote right now and pick one. But a couple of you said you're hanging. So let me ask Commissioner Tobias and Smith this, because it's really going to kind of be up to you. Do you want to 
take till next meeting because y'all brought that beginning to talk to them or something or do you want to you feel comfortable voting today so gentlemen I I, I think you're the guy's going to be making this decision right now so if you'd let me know what you'd like I'm yeah. comfortable in making a decision Madam Chair okay hold on just a second Commissioner Tobias are you comfortable making a decision today or would you like time I'm comfortable making a decision for one of those two candidates Today? right right now. Okay. If there's a if the, if we push it uh, uh, for that other candidate, I, I would be willing to go in that direction as well. I'm trying to be as flexible as possible here. Okay, Madam Chair. What I'm saying is to be very bluntly, I'm I'm. I'm, I'm good with voting for Abby today. I'm mm -hmm. not good with voting Morris gotcha. today is what I'm okay, saying. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, Commissioner Lober, Th sir. Those were, and I'm not violating anyone's confidence on this, those were the two that actually had the conversation with me, Morris and Abby, about whether or not we'd be selecting a, a candidate today. And they, they both, those two, not the other three, because I didn't discuss it with the other three, um, expressed to me that they were hoping that we would, would make a decision today. Now, granted, this is something that what they want Obviously, maybe we can factor in, maybe we can't. Um, as Commissioner Tobia mentioned, yeah, a five-page memo did go out. It's going to be included. It was already provided to the clerk's office uh, to include with the minutes uh, for today's meeting. I, basically, I feel like I've already won on this in the sense that I narrowed, from my view, five good candidates down to, to three excellent candidates. And the two that remain in consideration were two of the top three that I put in the memo. So either way this goes, I'm, I'm actually rather happy. Now that said, um, I think there are a couple things to keep in mind that were not specifically addressed in the memo. Um, you know, Commissioner Tobias, one of the things that you mentioned uh, on career source and on some other fronts was promoting diversity uh, in the selections and decisions that we, that we make as a board. Um, I will tell you, this is one of those that's exceedingly difficult for me to choose between Abby and Morris. I've listed positives that each of them have. Um, I've listed negatives that each of them have relative to one another. And I'll tell you, they come out very close on the equation for me. Um, that said, when you have two essentially interchangeable candidates, they're both good for different reasons and both have different weaknesses that roughly even out, all else equal, I think if we can go with a diverse candidate, all the better. So if we can have a, a woman instead of a man, um, you know, wonderful not to take a less qualified candidate for that purpose, but if they're equally qualified, which I think is, is probably a very fair statement with these two. Um, the other thing is I, I think we have something available to us with Abby that we don't have with any of the other candidates. And I, I say this, you know, kind of half tongue in cheek, half seriously, in that we can have something of a trial period. And my, my motion goes into the transition uh, that would be involved with having the handover from Eden to Abby or whomever it would be. And I, I can tell you that the transition period, if we were to discover, and I can't fathom that this would be the case, but if we were to discover that it's a bad fit, we could find out prior to the, the reins changing hands. So I would suggest, you know, that's something that's not available with any of the others, because if we bring someone else, they're going to have to quit their job where they're at now in order to come here. If we bring Abby on, and God forbid, and I don't expect this to be the case, um, all hell breaks loose, we have an opportunity to, to scale things back without someone having given up employment for us to, to have a trial period. So if, if you all are interested, I'm happy to run through the motion and see where it goes. Not, not right now, but hold on to it, okay? Hold on to it just a second. Commissioner Zonka? Oh. I would say given the discussion and given that these two are our top candidates, maybe learning more, at least giving them a chance to pitch because, you know, as far as, you know, prior, and I, I didn't want to do this, but prior experience and prior, we had a public records thing that went, went to hell with one of the candidates. And I, I you know, for me, I, again, I think, I think the track record and the history, and as far as him not leaving, you having that conversation with him about, that was one of the questions I had for him. So I was glad he took my call yesterday, was, you know, I, I heard that you, you know, basically were sort of getting groomed for this job at the county. You know, he, he, Morris was here 10 years as opposed to Abby's two. So there's, you know, if we're talking experience with the county, he, um, he, he made a commitment to West Melbourne and thought that he owed, you know, owed that commitment to them. And West Melbourne was a mess when he went there. And it was. It was an absolute mess. So I, I give him props for that. This is his dream job. And that's what I asked. Why would you come here? Why wouldn't, you know, you have all this experience, why the county? And he said, this, is, this has always been my dream is to work for the county. He loves the law. And I, I just think that, you know, Commissioner Tobia, you know, with all due respect, 
unplanned and not his fault, what was not part of the interview process. His staff had to do the interviews because he had pre-booked um, that he was going to be out of town. So it, again, it wasn't his fault. Maybe there's questions that he could ask that candidate. And again, I, I don't like the public display, but at the same breath, I think this is too important. And I think the, the candidates may be too close, just judging by your initial comments. I, I want to give Morris a chance. I want him to have a fighting chance because I think he is a fantastic attorney. And I, again, if you're pitting experience 10 years to two, then Morris would have more experience with the county under another fantastic attorney of Scott Knox. So again, I think, I think we're losing a really awesome, potentially great candidate in, in Morris Richardson. So if, if the board would be amicable to it, I, I would say, you know, at least give the guy a chance to talk about his credentials in, it, in, in a public forum so Commissioner Tobiah can have a, the opportunity to have a discussion with him since he is our second choice. I mean, just going off of the, uh, the board, the way the board's leaning, I don't know, just a thought. Okay, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Not to muddy the waters anymore, but um, I had asked Mars about it when I interviewed with him and the judgeship came up. I talked to him about back in 2012, he ran for judge. And um, anyway, he, he said that he's not going anywhere. He gets this job, he's staying here. And this is the, the, the job that he'll be in until uh, he's ready to retire. If he wants to be a judge at that point in time, he can run for judgeship. But this is the job that, as you said, it's, it's his dream job. So I know I'm throwing some additional information that can muddy the waters, but I just, for, for the interest of being forthright and honest, it, it, I did ask the question and that was very important to him. So I wanted to pass that on. I don't want a public display. I don't want to ask them questions in public. If you guys want to make the decision to bring these two candidates back for us to talk with, I'm fine with that. Um, I don't know what I can ask them that I didn't already ask them. I've done a lot of interviews in my life. I never hired an attorney, but really from my perspective, it's not any different from hiring anybody else. You focus on the job itself, what the job requires, and you really want to get to know, you want to ask questions that give you insight as to who the person is. And I've already done that, so I don't need to meet with either one of them. Uh, like I said, I'm really kind of at a toss up, but if I had to vote today, I would lean towards Abby by the slightest of margins. Okay, so Commissioner Smith, I, Commissioner Lober's pretty solid. Commissioner Zonka's pretty solid. I think you and Commissioner Tobias are the ones I'm trying to figure out whether we're doing this today or waiting or where y'all are comfortable. So actually, you're the two gentlemen I really need to hear from so I can see where you guys are as far as settled on voting well, Like today. I said, I'm, I'm good today. I've asked all the questions I'm going to ask. If, if you guys want to bring those two back, are you I, not going to change? You think they're settled? Yeah, I, I'm not. There's no, there's no question that I can ask either one of them that, okay. we, that I need to, an answer to. I so already, I already did that. On who you're going to vote for? Mm -hmm. Okay, Commissioner um, Tobiah, you as well. You're the other one. If, if I can find out if you think you're solid, or, or well, I mean, another meeting would change you. That's what I'm trying to figure thanks, out. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, and and our office has worked with the county attorney's office on on multiple occasions. Um, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable right now. Uh, I, I don't know about this motion. I have to look over it. I don't know if our current county attorney is uh, okay, okay with this. I'd certainly want to see what her opinion uh, would be with this. I'd certainly like to see what Abby would uh, have to say uh, about this. Um, but I'm, today I'm, I'm comfortable with, uh, today I'm comfortable with going with Abby. I've spoken with uh, constitutional officers. I've sp spoken with current staff on this one. Um, the individual that sat on uh, in on on the meeting was an was an attorney in my office who was able to ask, quite frankly, better questions than what I can with with no legal uh, with no le formal legal education. So um, uh, I am uh, more than uh, willing to go with Abby. Uh, if the decision is going to be uh, made today. Okay. Um, so I, I think what we'll do, Commissioner, um, I don't know what's our old lights. Is that a new light? No. Okay. Commissioner Lover, is that a new light? It is. 
Okay. So I, th I think what if you guys don't mind, we'll, we'll make a vote here in a minute to, to go with, with an attorney because I think you guys are, are there. And then we'll, we'll talk about this motion after we do that. Is that all right? Commissioner Lober. A couple, a couple things with that. I, I think part of, part of what I intended to get across with this motion, and I will tell you I did run it by Abby, uh, and I incorporated a requested change uh, in the, let's see, first, second, third, fourth paragraph uh, that she had requested regarding the handover. Uh, she is okay with that, and I'm happy to represent that to the commission with respect to how it reads now without any, any objections as it was changed to, to fit the one concern that she had. Um, part of what I wanted to do was to clarify with this transition exactly who's in charge. We, we cannot have two bosses at the same time. So if we simply select someone, we still are left with an ambiguity in terms of are they in charge and is Eden second? Or is Eden in charge for a period of time? This motion, if it does nothing else, clarifies to a very large extent exactly who's responsible for what and when the handover takes place. So I would suggest rather than just selecting someone and leaving it ambiguous, we, we really need to take a look at this. I don't know if, if Eden has had a chance or, or maybe by the end of the meeting if we can recall this particular agenda item to give her an opportunity to take a look at it. Um, but I, I would strongly suggest that if you don't want to adopt the particular verbiage that I use, that we include something else that would cover those concerns, because this addresses essentially any question that foreseeably can come up with respect to who's in charge, when they're in charge, so we don't have a problem, even though I don't anticipate one, between now and the time that Eden retires. I don't okay, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think I'm going to vote with this, Commissioner Lober, just because I, I heard your, your thought with it. But if Abby can't jump in in that time period and she's been here, we're picking the wrong lady. So I, I think she can do it. I, I think I'm, I'm comfortable with Eden finishing this through and Abby getting things in sort. Same if we brought on Mr. Richardson, I, I, would, I would feel the same way. Either they know how to do this job or they don't. That doesn't answer so, the question, though. Well, it does for me. I think Eden can finish it out. I think her and Abby work very well together or, or whoever comes in. So I, I'm, I'm probably not going to vote for this. I don't know where the rest of the commission is. But I, I'm willing that if we all get a, a, a good place of where we're going with an attorney, I'm, I'm going to vote with them. I, I want the attorney coming in feeling they're, they're very wanted by this commission. Okay. So Well, th this is my motion. I'll, I'll go ahead and formalize it as well, such. Hold on just a second. Let me get through a couple. Commissioner Zonka still, and then we'll come right back to it. Commissioner Zonka? And I don't think this will change anybody's minds, but, you know, if, if everyone, you know, has such high thoughts on Abby, I mean, if, if Morris Richardson were the choice, we'd still have both. So that's just a thought. Put it out there. She's the assistant, so we would still have both talents. For how long? Are you asking me? Yeah. Because I'm not them. Well, I, if you're I saying we have them both, them. I mean, you're representing And if that. you're saying Abby would leave because she didn't get the job, she's been here for two years, that says more about her. I mean, I don't know how long she would stay, but I asked I'm, Morris if he would retain the staff, and he had said yes. I'm just not sure I'd be comfortable in some place I wasn't, you know, okay. wanted. Wasn't wanted. Wasn't oh. the first choice. Was the second. I mean, that's making a pretty big leap. To well, assume another that. leap is not wanting to bring candidates back for a round of interviews until your chosen candidate wasn't the candidate. I that said if you had more them. questions, because John Tobiah did not interview one of the attorneys that that applied. But you didn't. You wouldn't have said that if it were Morris. Of course I'm going to fight for my candidate. But my point is your, your, your logic applies only to one candidate, but conveniently not the other. That's well, not true. And, it is? And it is absolutely not true. When you, when you started discussing this, you had mentioned that you, and, you didn't want to have second Commissioner rounds. Commissioner Smith said he was on the fence. He said he was on the fence when he initiated the conversation. So, I mean, I appreciate the back and forth, but no it's thanks. Fine. Okay. Well, the minutes reflect everything. Commissioner Smith. Many minutes that you offer. Yeah, I'm just going to say from my perspective, Eden is the county attorney until she walks out the door. Yeah. She's the boss until she walks out the door. She can turn over whatever workload she wants to whichever county attorney that she has working for her. It's her choice. So if she wants to increase Abby's workload as she goes along, that's her choice. If she wants to continue doing what she's doing now, that's her choice. She's the boss. And she is the boss until the day she walks out the door. And she'll, she's smart enough to figure out how to, how to prepare that office for the, for the uh, eventual day that she leaves. So uh, I think it's a moot point. Okay, Commissioner Tobias asked for a five minute break. Sir, is that correct? Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to speak with okay. uh, County Attorney concerning this motion. Okay, I'm gonna take a five minute break here. Having fun. 
Yeah. <laughs>
Mr. Lober, with your light. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to make a motion to um, appoint Abigail Jurenby to be our next county commissioner. I have a motion. Oh. <laughs> County attorney. County, what did I say? County commissioner. Well, she can be that too if she wants. <laughs> Do we have to take our? Pick? She can take my place. <laughs> County attorney. I stand corrected. Oh, you pulled a Rita. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I don't have a second. Madam Chair. Okay, motion dies for a lack of second. I'm going to make a different motion. Uh, that at least this is going to shorten the prior motion considerably, but I, I think it includes the absolute minimum that we need to get in there. I move that we, we name Abby uh, as county attorney effective November 1st. So there's, there's no ambiguity with respect to who's in charge till then. And additionally contemplated as part of the motion, we direct staff to begin negotiating a contract and authorize them to perform any necessary changes or, or actions in furtherance thereof. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tobia. Um, discussion? Are you good with that? I'm good with that. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Is Miss Abby in the room? She's upstairs. Oh, I thought maybe she took the day off and we'd have to kind of work <laughs> on that. Okay. Only if it went badly. Congratulations, Miss Abby. But I do want to say um, I, I have worked with her long enough. <clears throat> if we would have picked um, the other fella, she she wouldn't have got mad and quit. She's just in for the long run with the county, and it's just not her personality. And if I would have thought that, she wouldn't have been in my top two. So I just wanted to to say that, Commissioner Tobia. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, what who what who will the staff be to? to negotiate the contract with. Oh, good thought. I think, wouldn't that be our manager? That's what I think, but you didn't. Yeah. If oh. that's Just for clarity's sake, I, I think county manager that's would be. That's typically what they do, right? If you're good with that, I'm good with that, unless y'all need Here's a motion a for it. You, Madam Chair. Frank, right? Yeah, typically it's been, it's been uh, the county manager and the human resource director will come back and bring a, a proposed contract back to the board. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay, we are now moving into item J1. Item, item J1 is a request from Ivy Cove LLC for the board to waive section 6228.83D that requires a 15 foot buffer tract along residential subdivisions. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, sir. I am comfortable with this. Move to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Lober. Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Item <laughs> J2. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good morning, commissioners. <laughs> Mary Ellen Donner, Brevard County Parks and Recreation Department Director. You have before you uh, asking for direction regarding background screening investigations for Parks and Recreation Department recreation partners, recreation instructors, and volunteers. I have presented three potential options for, uh, for background screening and also three potential options for background screening costs. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Lober, I'm gonna call you, but I just wanna throw this out yes, here real quick. Um, I'm probably gonna wanna stay with what we have, unless we went to number two and made it um, a little bit, little bit tighter, but I think what we have in place is working. So I just wanted to throw that out. As far as loosening it, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be in agreement with that just because it's involving the children. So that's kind of where I'm settling. Commissioner Lober? I, I wanted to actually address the, the second part of it uh, first. So the, the background screening cost, my thought is, you know, this is one of those where we really could go either way. I think they're good arguments either way, but I, I think option B, which is kind of a, a split the difference sort of an option, is something I'd be comfortable with. So regardless of, of which of the numeric options we go with, I would suggest maybe we look at option B um, separate and apart from that. Okay, sir, so you're, you're thinking that the, the person doing it would help share the cost with it? 50-50. Okay. Any other comments? Hmm. Commissioner Zonka? 
I would prefer that the league takes over their costs at the beginning of the year uh, myself because, you know, that's part of what you pay for when you – and they can, you know, if, if they're having trouble financing the league activities, they can – you know, as parents, we have to pay for our kids to participate all the time, and I would rather that burden be less on the county and we invest those monies more into the maintenance of those parks because that's probably one of the – not multiple complaints we get, but, you know, people are concerned about our ball fields and that sort of thing. So I'd rather pass the cost on to the recreational groups after um, the beginning of the year. Okay. Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm glad that we've uh, pretty much glossed over uh, the first uh, portion of it. I think uh, administrative orders are something that are best left uh, in the county manager's hands. I think he's done a fabulous job on this. Um, it doesn't matter, but I fully support uh, AO5, and uh, I think he, it's done a, a great job uh, making sure that people that shouldn't be around our kids are not around our kids. And you look at the number of, uh, again, I, do, I don't go over this stuff, but it was brought to our attention. Uh, Ms. Donner brought us applicants that were not allowed to 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 be around our kids and there were some scary things uh, as to people that even applied and you got to wonder about all the people that thought better than applying in the first place so again um, I don't think administrative orders uh, need to be uh, amended uh, in any way as far as background costs um, they are substantial money that is not going to tax breaks uh, uh, mo or money that would directly be going to provide better services. Um, I like option C, uh, and Mary Ellen had done a good job uh, bringing the cost down. We could do it per annum, so it's not a, a large hit. Um, I would be in favor of C. However, uh, if the board goes with B, that certainly would cut the costs in half. So uh, e either way, uh, B or C certainly would uh, be a better circumstance than what we're currently in. Okay, I have one B and two Cs. Commissioner Smith, sorry, I'm going to <laughs> see which one was your choice. Would you like to continue to pay for all of the background? Do you want to split it with the rec partners, or do you want the rec partners to pick it up in full January 1st? I like I like option B, but I would I would prefer if it was one year rather than two. We can do that. B one year and not two. Okay, Commissioner Lober. Yeah, that's I was going to say there's there's nothing holy about making it a two year period. You could you could make it indefinite. You could make it one year. You could make it five years. Um, you know, option B. There's nothing that says we can't kind of modify it a little bit. If Commissioner Smith is happier with with having it be one half for one year and then. At that point, it would shift to the rec partner. I could live with that as well. Okay, I, th I think I'm probably comfortable with that to give a lot of time, well, some time for them to adjust because we already got some that are already gonna cover that time period anyways for a lot of these people. This would just be involved in the new people coming on board, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so you want me to make a motion? I think, I think we've heard through everybody. Okay. I'll make a motion that we go with option B, but change it from two years to one year. Second. Through July 23. Is the AO currently in place? Yes, everything yes. except okay. that. Can, can we keep them separated? Is that all right? I, I think the, the, we have to change the AO a little bit to include this language, correct? No. No? Okay. No, the AO does not address the cost of the background check. Okay. So, so that's my motion. To leave AO in place and then do option. You guys have this B over there. B with one year. I'll second. Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass this 5-0. You guys are so great to work with. I'm so Thank glad you all protect children. Um, item J3. Commissioner, uh, this agenda item uh, relates to the uh, Coronavirus State Fiscal Recovery Fund, or ARPA, and deals with the $58.5 million that was allocated in the first tranche for the board. As you know, uh, $8.5 million um, was already dedicated to fire rescue, leaving $50 million. In the agenda item itself, um, staff has given you a framework for discussion, that framework includes looking at what ARPA funds could be util utilized for the first, um, <clears throat> the first, 
the, the first bucket, so to speak, is a recommendation of investing in water and sewer infrastructure. Staff provided a $30 million amount there. That amount, um, and I wanted to be clear on this portion of it, we, we provided you an attachment that showed about $40 million worth of work that utilities believes can be completed under ARPA under two years. Two years, however, is not a mandate. Um, we have actually four years in which to um, allocate those expenditures and actually six years to complete it. So there are many other projects in various districts that can be undertaken if the board allocates 30 million or any portion thereof or more than the 30 million, including dollars that are gonna be available next year after May when additional $58 million will be made available. So you have the $30 million in that first bucket. In the second bucket, we have categorized for the board's consideration the other major programs we think the board would be interested in looking at, and we've outlined them in the agenda item, and we have put a number of $10 million into those buckets. Those buckets include revenue replacement opportunities in three different major areas, tourism, gas tax, and soil, which had lost revenues during, uh, during COVID-19, and how much money was available there. There's about close to $10 million that would be available. You can do any or a portion thereof in those areas if you so chose. Uh, a second major area that's available under ARPA is a negative, negative economic impact. Um, there's a, there's a, um, a potential of doing it into disproportionately impacted communities or economically disadvantaged areas, such as household assistance, small businesses, nonprofits, tourism, travel, hospitality, they're all specified in the legislation. Uh, premium pay, hazard pay, um, uh, during the period of COVID, during which COVID was there, is another area that's specified in there. And so that's included there as well. And, and staff has given a $10, a $10 million um, starting point for the board's discussion. And then the third area would be, uh, since you have a significant time in which to make these decisions, we put the remaining dollars into a $10 million reserve. The board could at any point uh, decide where to dedicate that more toward infrastructure, more toward um, any of the programs that are outlined in, in that second bucket. Uh, that would be up to the board. So we offer that and the details that are included in the agenda uh, to get uh, the board to have some discussion on it and then to give us the direction of how you'd like us to proceed. Okay, Commissioner, you're lower your end, but let me throw out a really yes, simple idea because um, Commissioner Tobiah had brought this up a while ago. So we're dealing with potentially $50 million here. My thought would be to take 40 of it and divide it among the distant districts for infrastructure projects, some of them laid out before us like those, and then take the other $10 million and distribute them through the districts. Um, or I even put some in reserves, but I know I want to put some more into the uh, parks as far as some projects we have going up there as, as far as some things for outreach just for the community. But that's my thought is to take the 40, divide it by five districts, and we can use it for our projects in our communities. I have a lot of water projects. And then take the um, other 10 million, have some discussion on what you guys want to do with that. But that's my thought. Commissioner Lober? Okay, a few thoughts, and I'm that's a real interesting way to go about it. I don't know that I'm necessarily opposed to that. I kind of came in here figuring if we don't exceed the, the sort of bare minimum recommendation from staff of 30 million toward infrastructure, then we're not doing our job. Uh, I know a lot of us, me included, campaign to get here on infrastructure as being one of the big things. And this is an opportunity for us to actually show our commitment to adhering to the campaign promises for once. So I, I think we need to look at really how much we can push in that direction. I think maybe 38 million was kind of the base number I was looking at. I could live very easily with 40 million. It's, it's, you know, I don't want to say it's a rounding error when we're talking about two million bucks. There's, there's more projects. They just gave us some, but we could all. There's, yeah. there's millions in our I, districts. I could live with the 40 million portion. The the 10 million, I don't know that I want to divvy that up district by district. And with respect to the 40 million, I would like staff to have a degree of input with respect to what the projects are. I don't think any of us are nuts with respect to how we'd spend it, but I, I still would like staff to have a hand in guiding how that money is spent within the districts. Because frankly, if I have some asinine idea with respect to how I'm gonna spend 40 million to put up a 
a gold-plated road in District 2, I shouldn't be permitted to do that. Um, I don't think any of us are going to do that, but I, I just would like to see some mechanism, if someone has a suggestion, to have not a check and balance necessarily, but at least staff retain a hand in, in directing which particular projects are, are most meritorious, or perhaps to give some options to the commissioner from which the commissioner can choose within their own district. Beyond that, though, a couple of other thoughts, and if, if folks don't want to do it, I respect that. Um, I, I know that Commissioner Tobia uh, earlier in the meeting said at some point it's got to end or something along those lines with respect to uh, the agenda item for the Complex Cafe. I don't know if we're interested in doing any form of small business relief. I'm, I'm totally okay looking at that and considering that with a period of money or, or I should say a portion of the money. Um, the other thing, and I, I'll just be fully candid with this, I don't know if it qualifies, but we may want to look at putting aside a relatively small amount that frankly isn't a small amount by itself um, to fund a feasibility study to bring waste management functions in-house so we do solid waste collection in-house potentially at the end of our current contract with waste management. Um, it is more expensive at least than what I had anticipated it would cost. The numbers that I was given by staff after I requested they look into it, uh, the numbers around a quarter of a million. So it would be roughly 250000 to fund a feasibility study, but I, I think that has a, a merit and a potential to help us tremendously in knowing what the options are and having a better position negotiating when all of us are off the commission in six years' time. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. I like the 40 and 10, and I like the idea of uh, dividing the 10 million, <coughs> excuse me, the $10 million amongst the five of us, um, it's $2 million a, a commissioner. And the 10 million, I relish the idea that I could spend that and target it for infrastructure. And I would be subject to doing the same with the extra 2 million. But that would give each of us that discretion that if you have something going on in your district that particularly like you're interested in the study, that would give you the $250,000 to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody else had a, a particular pet project that would include some drainage ditch or something that needs mm -hmm. to be done uh, that maybe wouldn't be warranted in the, in the $40 million or passed over. It's just, it would be at the discretion of the commissioners. And if one or two or three of the commissioners said, you know, I don't need that extra $2 million, let's just put it into the general fund so that we can do more infrastructure, that's okay too. So that, that, those are my thoughts. Okay. Oh, Frank's waving his finger. Yeah, if I could. If I'm, what, I, what I'm hearing is that the 40 million would be split among the five districts, eight million each for water or uh, wastewater related projects. That's the infrastructure that we're talking about. Then the other 10 million, we actually have that in general revenue, which gives the board the freedom. So we would put that 10 million there and you can, you're gonna have greater flexibility. So I, I believe that's what I'm hearing everybody saying. I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that we were all on the same page and that staff handles it appropriately if that's what the motion is and that's how the board moves forward. Yes, sir. Mr. Zonka. And that's what I would add. I mean, going through the infrastructure list, I realized that, you know, we have big, you know, expensive projects, but my district, you know, <clears throat> compared to the multi-million dollar projects in other districts, I'm, I'm gonna at least ask that the board share in the, you know, evening up those amounts so I can possibly get more. We have definitely some big road needs. Um, I would like to be able to review yeah. my priorities and, and make it fair across the districts as far as yeah, the allocated and as, amount. And I believe, yeah, we can yeah. do that. I think that would work because this public works projects that could qualify stormwater, water related that, that I think we could qualify under I realize I have less you. county coverage yeah. than the other districts and there's great needs and yeah, especially in North sense. County, but I have some of the most highly traveled roads in my district and I want to make sure that I'm taking care of those. I like that. So Are we allowed to use some on roads too? Out of the 10 million, you would be. Okay. Okay, so um, I know you have enough water and infrastructure projects to use that too, so, okay. 
So uh, with your scenario, you would have that $2 million to, at your discretion. And you, if you had a road or I was talking drainage. about this utility list. And right. On the yeah. utility yeah. list, it would, it's water. And I believe stormwater is also included. So that's how we could get into, you know, with the ditches and all too. But I would like this divvied up fair across yeah. the districts because as it stands right. right now, again, there's two and a half million in district five, two projects as opposed to a significant you know, amount in other areas. And I just want that to be fair across the district. Oh, oh yeah, no, we, we're, we're talking about eight million going to each district. Yeah. And, and what would happen is if you didn't have water, uh, wastewater projects, this is where it's gonna be up to staff to look at it. We Depending on where you allocate like your resources, we may not need to use the general revenue replacement, which would give us the opportunity to change it and shift some dollars around so that it'll give you more flexibility. But we're looking at doing it as eight million for each and we would, and that's how we would allocate it. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. Because I have some that aren't even on this list that need done. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Okay, um, I'm out of lights. I either need a motion or what do you guys want to do? Mr. Lower? Chair, I just have one question. Oh, yes. Is it the intent to process these as you did the CARES items that come back to the board for approval? Just I, I'm, I'm, fine. I'm fine with that. I think that's and, a good and idea. And I think Commissioner Tobaya brought up making sure that they were completely in line with how we're allowed to spend the money as well, which I thought was well, good. Well, Commissioner Lovers doesn't want us to build a gold-plated something. Or it, platinum. Platinum, <laughs> whatever. So, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah. Commissioner Lover. Okay. Um, I'm happy to make the motion if you need a motion with respect to that. Um, I, I just want to throw out there as well, we're dealing with this first half up front now, so to the degree that having a very high likelihood we're going to have a similar amount come in the future may change how you want to allocate it, I would just caution folks you may want to bear that in mind, um, regardless of whether that changes where you are today or not. But if, if you'd like, I'll go ahead and make the motion to divvy up $40 million of the amount that we're discussing equally amongst the five districts, uh, whereby staff in the appropriate department, whether it be utilities or otherwise, uh, will work with the commission office to provide a list of projects along with estimated costs. The commission office uh, will go through those, those items with staff, bring back uh, what their proposals are to the county commission as a whole, and then we'll vote to approve them um, as soon as they're ready to do that. With respect to the, remain, the remaining 10 million though, um, I, I just wanna make sure the motion has what you contemplate phrased correctly. We'll split that evenly amongst the five districts and that will be used for, what's your preference in terms of how to phrase it, um, Chair Pritchett? Um, well, I, I kinda already know what I'm gonna do, but I think if we, if we do that, then that we can come back with, with what we're doing with it. Okay, so may maybe the best is we don't even address the $10 million now. We leave it alone. Well, I'd like to go ahead and, and do $2 million per, okay. per district. And okay, then so we're, we're, okay, so the motion will include earmarking $2 million per district yeah. from the remaining $10 million that's being discussed, um, whereby commission districts will bring forth an agenda item or otherwise cause to come before the Board of County Commissioners uh, a discussion on how they intend or how they recommend using those funds within their respective districts. That's good. Fair Might enough. want to do roads or whatever we're doing too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. All in favor? Are you trying to push the light, Commissioner no, Devine? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. All right, we're moving into item J4. Right item, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oops, that's right here. Okay. Um, it's my item, Madam Chair. This is yours. Wonderful. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. May I go ahead? Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is dealing uh, with the PACE program. This had come to uh, our board previously, and we, by uh, Action 4 1, had authorized the program uh, in Brevard County. I spoke with uh, Chairman Randy Fine. Um, he, of course, brought to my attention that in 2010, uh, I voted uh, for this to become statute. He is 100% correct. This was one uh, vote that, uh, quite frankly, I, uh, 
was bad at the time. And I think I uh, w made a little bit of amends when it came up here um, and voted against it. He also wanted me to, this is a little strange starting giving the uh, arguments on the other side before you present his, but I appreciate the work that he does for this county and certainly want all, all the information out there so we can make an informed decision. His uh, point was that there was uh, no cost uh, to taxpayers. So I, I said that I certainly would include that. Uh, but I, on the other hand, um, am uh, against this liberal uh, Berkeley created program that is uh, highly touted or was highly touted uh, by President Obama. Um, uh, our tax collector uh, pointed out a, uh, an individual who uh, uh, is having his property sold at tax auction, somebody that receives veterans benefits. So these are having consequences uh, on our citizens. This program continues to grow. I provided everyone up here with the, um, with the email correspondence that I received from the tax collector. As this program grows, uh, unfortunately, I fear that those um, situations where people will lose their house uh, will increase. This is not unusual. Uh, two counties, both Hillsborough and Hernando, and I'll be more than willing to pass that out, have decided to go in a different direction and end their PACE program. My uh, issues with this program are uh, the same from the beginning. Unfortunately, the consequences now are being uh, felt by individuals. This program allows a financing mechanism that jumps the first mortgage. And this bastardizes the system and uh, is unfair not only to uh, individuals uh, that aren't aware of the situation they're getting in, but quite frankly, they're not helping with the mortgage lending business. Uh, the individuals that make the first mortgage assume that that, in fact, is their first mortgage that is, is not happening. Uh, I also sent out, of course, that video that was humorous, but also, uh, I, I believe, somewhat informative uh, about many of the contractors here that are selling this system, uh, but don't have the where for all to explain it uh, in such a way that, that lenders who provide mortgages do. So for uh, all these reasons, and maybe there's a middle ground here, but uh, now that we have an individual that will be losing his house because of this, I think that this is something that we need to look for. Uh, we need to uh, change because this problem is only going to get larger, uh, and we see what we see what's happening across the state, and certainly in other counties. So um, I'd like to see where everyone is on this. If there is a middle ground, if you want to continue uh, with this, if you want to look at it again in 12 months to see if you know, this is something that the state takes care of and, and in fairness, uh, Representative or Chairman Fine has put in some, put in a bill this past <coughs> year that though did not pass, put some additional measures on this uh, that would hopefully help stem some of these problems. Unfortunately, it did not pass. So I wanted to see where everyone is on this issue uh, and decide whether or not uh, this is a good idea to go in a different direction uh, put some additional restrictions on it, or are, you, are we comfortable with people uh, losing their homes because of this program? Mr. Tobias, I got to kind of piggyback on that because I voted for this last time, and um, I, I, I um, wish I hadn't of. And not that it, it's not it doesn't have potential being a good program, but I, I didn't kick in the uh, accounting brain that if you get a, a loan, you have a homestead, as a matter of fact, with your, with your home that protects you, as you talked about with your, your first mortgage, make sure that's covered. But when you do this and you have a tax lien, you lose that ability to keep your home if you run in, into a, a problem. So um, you're right. Uh, although nobody's lost it yet, there is a possibility for a lot of people to lo lose their houses. And if, if you got to take out a tax lien to do something because nobody will give you a loan for it, it kind of shows you can't pay it back. So um, I, I uh, wish now I hadn't voted in favor of it. I hope the people that benefit from, benefited from it were able to afford it have done well with it. But 
um, I'm, I'm not going to be supporting continuing this um, either. But I do have seven cards, but Commissioner Lober, your light's on as well, sir. A couple thoughts. And first, Commissioner Tobias, I, I have to do this to you because you do this to us, <laughs> the rest of us, almost all the time when we have something like this. You know, this, this liberal Berkeley created, I think you said Obama touted program, was not only approved by you in your then capacity as a state representative, but by a solidly Republican legislature. In fact, it's my understanding based on a conversation, I presume with the same state rep that you spoke with, that every Republican in attendance voted to approve this program. And we're supposed to be a commission of how many Republicans? Five Republicans. So now that I've, I've done uh, my, my obligatory chastising of, of you, my due diligence, <laughs> as Commissioner Smith says, um, I'll get to, uh, to the meat of it. So to me, this program is one that, that enables folks who otherwise might not be able to have things like working air conditioning during our molten Florida summer to have working AC. People oftentimes will lose their homes if they don't pay their mortgages. We don't ban mortgages as a result. If you wanted to come back or if you're ready now to introduce some form of consumer protection, whether it's in the form of a disclosure that's obligatory or otherwise, I'm happy to look at that. I may well support you for it, but I'm just generally disinclined to start abridging freedom of contract because of a small number of bad actors that we can deal with separately, either through some form of consumer protection uh, or through some penalty mechanism if they're, if they're found to be acting in, in some fashion that we preclude. But I, I can't strike the program as a whole uh, on account of the fact that a small number of individuals may not be conducting themselves in a, in a fashion that we're able to, to mandate that they conduct themselves. But that's, that's where I'm at. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go ahead and call cards. I have Mr. Rich Workman. First, great. Thank you very much. Commissioner. How are you doing? Good to see you. I haven't seen you around in a while. Yes, I, yeah, I, I've been uh, just teaching middle school up in, in your neck of the woods, right down the street. Really? Yeah, I'm at Jackson Riddle. Are you really? What U.S. History, mold and shaping young minds. All right. This Canadian teaches U.S. history, so I can say that before Commissioner Tobias does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving my three minutes. Thank you for that, sir. Um, Mr. Tobias, thank you for bringing this up, and thank you for not only voting for it in 2010, but being a co-sponsor of that mighty fine bill uh, in the Tallahassee. Uh, and, and you know what? I can't hold him accountable. You look back and you're like, why did I vote for that? I get you, John. It's okay. But you know, four years ago when I came up to talk about this, um, I, I think I said it then, I'll say it again. Uh, I hate debating Commissioner John Tobias because I think of myself as a pretty good conservative. And then you walk away from a debate with him and you realize, well, I'm, a, I'm an Obama liberal. <laughs> um, John has a, a, a line in the sand that I admire. His line in the sand is if it takes government interference in any way, then, it shouldn't, then, then you shouldn't have to do it. My line in the sand is if it doesn't affect your neighbor, if it's, if it's, if it's between you and the government and there, there's no cost to my neighbor, uh, no cost to other taxpayers, then it, it, um, that's my, land, my line. And so when you consider that 2,000 folks have harden their roofs, harden their windows, um, in some cases ACs, things that um, protect us as a neighborhood in a hurricane, and um, very few complaints. Um, and there's always the ability to fix it. The, the gentleman we're talking about, when, when that complaint came forward, um, he, the company that he got his uh, pay loan from has paid that off as of, I think, yesterday, conveniently before the committee meeting, but that's when it was brought to their attention. Um, I would say, instead of throwing this out, if you're generally concerned, and I, can, I know John is, and, and I know the, um, many of you are, Randy Fine put forward a tremendous bill with huge protections. Um, many of the PACE have already implemented some things. Put it on them. Put it on them. They have a contract with the Green Corridor, right? Each one of them will have, be held accountable to that. In a, in a year from now, or six months, when we look at it again, if, if they're not living up to the new standards, people are still being deceived or hurt, if it's pot, you can fire that PACE provider. There's uh, three or four of them in the, in the county. You can look at it and say, you know what, you're not doing the job. You, you have eight, nine, ten people that shouldn't have received it based on, 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 on state law. You're no longer allowed to do it in Brevard. Or if it's more than that, then you can re reconsider. But I don't think that one or two or even ten out of two thousand is a reason to ditch it all together at this point, but it is a reason, because every person matters, to look at it again and maybe put in some uh, increased. Do you hear my voice? I'm nervous. 
<laughs> You've done this a long time. You're very enjoyable. Yeah, I appreciate your time today. I really do. I appreciate you seeing me and talking to me in the last couple of weeks. And um, I know you do the right thing. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chris Peterson. Uh, good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Chris Peterson. I represent the uh, Florida Peace Funding Agency and Fortify Financial, peace provider here in Florida. And I've been in this industry a long time, and the, to say that it's evolved is an understatement. Uh, over the last several years, all of the CEOs of these companies have been replaced with financial professionals. Before, to Mr. Tobias's point, there were some folks that were policy, you know, clean energy folks in, in those positions. When these CEOs were replaced, the very first thing they did was implement a set of consumer protection standards. And it's the first thing, and I believe the only thing, that all of these CEOs have actually ever agreed upon. But these protections, and, and these are the same ones that the Representative Fine ran in his bill, uh, that unfortunately did fall short this session, but we've already implemented these standards. As of today, and as of the last you know, year and a half, two years, we've been implementing these, and it is a completely different industry. We analyze ability to pay. We do... Uh, uh, we we, we uh, do a confirmed term calls for all of the assessments. A anytime an applicant applies, we go and we call them on a recorded line and we go over each of the terms to ensure that this makes sense and that this is for them. And if it's if it's not, that's we'd much rather find out today than, than, than years down the road. And again, ability to pay, we look at the, uh, uh, we do an um, inspection for all of the properties. Once the, once the uh, improvements have been installed, we'll go back and ensure them, verify that they actually were installed so that there's not fraud perpetrated by contractors, which has been something we've seen from time to time in the past. It does not happen anymore whatsoever. I, rather than getting rid of this program that actually allows a financing mechanism for folks to, to be reinsured for their roofs and to protect their homes from wind harm, uh, wind harm their homes from uh, weather events, we recommend that you implement these consumer protections, get everybody on the same page, put this standard in place that we're already all doing to ensure that, we, again, we have transparency and we are all have all the expectations aligned, everybody knows what what we're expected to do. And I think the results are gonna speak for themselves. Is there anything that you've seen in the past, it's just these aren't things that are happening anymore because of the way that we've implemented these standards. So again, well, I'm here to answer any questions you may have, but I ur urge you to consider moving towards a consumer protection document rather than just getting rid of this very important financing mechanism. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Amy Elliott. I'm Amy. I'm uh, a Y Green rep here in Brevard. Um, I apologize. I couldn't get any of my contractors here. I found out about this meeting yesterday at 2, and I was in between meetings in Lee County, so I wasn't able to get anybody here. Um, but I wanted to come myself and talk about this and talk about the John Oliver Show. Um, I helped bring PACE to Florida 2009 and 10. I remember the vote. I remember actually being involved with organizations like BOMA, Sierra Club, uh, Chamber of Commerce, Associated Industries. We worked with everybody because if you remember 2009 and 10, we'd had a, a huge real estate collapse. Banks stopped lending. People were losing their homes. People had lost their jobs. There was no money in the community to do these improvements. And in fact, last year, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were in the same situation. I had so many contractors calling me, and the first thing they would tell me is the score, of the FICA score, that they could not get um, you know, funded or couldn't get financing for. We've been open the entire time. We took our entire staff, made them all um, you know, work from home so that we could be here. And we've been here from day one in 2010 to now, making sure that people can get their, uh, get their improvements done. I wanted to talk about some of the myths because there are so many of them. Um, we do a lot of work in the community. I actually brought my daughter here. She goes to Eastern. Um, we stayed in the apartment last night. What they keep saying up pace is that it's a bunch of people coming in, knocking on doors, taking advantage of people, seniors, people that don't speak English as a first language. That's what I keep hearing over and over and over again. As I'm helping people that don't speak English as a first language, as I'm helping people with problems that they have in their, you know, in their projects. So I want to read off a couple of the myths and explain actually what is going on. Um, PACE is seen as a program for poor people. It's not. It's for anybody that doesn't have thousands of dollars sitting around waiting to go to do their roof or their HVAC system. People like me that have two kids in college, one son who's 15 who can't wait to drive, I've got bills and I don't have $8,000 for my HVAC system. 
um, we have people that now are obligated to get new roofs. They don't have the money, but the insurance companies are making them repair roofs after 10 years, and now they're struggling to figure out how am I going to pay for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. People that use this program, they're not all, you know, completely clueless. A lot of them actually um, are very savvy with credit. I had a woman who wanted to get a pool, and she had saved, and her credit was great. She wanted to get this pool, and the AC broke. She didn't want to use the credit for the AC because that would have hurt her chance of getting the pool. So instead, she got the AC with the house through PACE and still got her pool done with the credit. So PACE lets you be flexible. Um, we're not predatory. That's one of, the, you know, one of the things that people keep saying. And we've got permits. We've got maximum pricing guidelines. We have welcome calls. We have all kinds of stuff. And I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to read a quote from one of our uh, property owners here. I'm sorry, ma'am. You are You're out, out of time. time. Yeah, I can you. provide the quote if anybody needs thank it. But you. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Ms. Jennifer Rojo, did I say that right? Good morning. State your name and address, ma'am. Yes, Jennifer Rojo Suarez. Um, I am with Renew Financial, one of the PACE providers. Um, I am myself based in, in Miami, Florida. But I am the Government Affairs uh, Director for Renew Financial here in the state of Florida. Um, and again, good morning to everyone, uh, Chair, Commissioners. Um, I'm here to talk about um, item J4. Um, as part of our routine underwriting process, we use both automated technologies and manual processes to screen a property owner's tax history to ensure the program requirements are met prior to approval. Each of the over 200 applications that we funded here in Brevard County, um, we go through that and, and look through those processes with all that, as well as, as the assessment that, um, that was mentioned uh, earlier. When gaps in our processes are, gaps in our processes are rare. But when we do identify them, we roll out additional training and procedures to help eliminate future reoccurrences. We strive for a 100 success rate. And when, again, when, when there's a problem, we go ahead and investigate it and, and fix it. In regards, again, to the, the, um, the homeowner that was mentioned earlier, Renew Financial is committed to working with homeowners when a temporary hardship strikes so that if a mispayment, if there is a mispayment, uh, payment, it does not stop them from getting back on their feet. We have a hardship assistance program uh, that if the criteria is met, we make the PACE assessment on the homeowner's behalf without requiring repayment. And again, the homeowner that we just learned of, we, we did not know of what was going on in, in that sense, but as soon as we were alerted just yesterday in regards to that consumer, we went ahead and paid off and we're in the process of doing that right now. Uh, we are not, of course, we are here, you know, Renew Financial or PACE is here to help homeowners, storm hardening, resiliency, we, we do not want somebody to have a hardship, right? So if, if that is the case, we want to help those homeowners. And as in the case of this homeowner, we are um, looking, you know, we're going in the process right now to go ahead and, and, pay, and pay that assessment for that homeowner. Uh, I know we have a few seconds here. Um, but again, it, it is our commitment to protect homeowners and, and we ask that you please don't repeal uh, pace and we hope that we can continue to work together to add more consumer protections because we do believe that this program is a great program for all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Kate Wessner. You can put them up here, ma'am. We'll pass them right down for you. Yes, ma'am. 
Hello, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Kate Wessner, Y Green Energy Fund. I was before you in 2018 asking you to approve this program. Uh, at that time, um, you know, we, we had begun to make improvements to our program and, and our consumer protections are a big part of that. Uh, since then, since we came to you in 2018, uh, we have adopted a, a suite of consumer protections that include disclosures for property owners, the right to cancel, three-day right to cancel, uh, confirmed terms call, which some of my colleagues talked about. That means we call the homeowner and verify they've received the financing documents. We go over the terms, make sure they understand that it is on their tax bill, how they repay that, either through their escrow or directly to the tax collector. Uh, we address a number of different things with them. It's about a 15 to 20 minute call. It's not automated, it is a live human. It is very dynamic, where we ask questions where they have to answer, not just yes or no. Um, and so we've done this because we've heard feedback from other counties, which Commissioner Tobias referenced, that this program didn't have those consumer protections. So we have made improvements. This program has evolved quite a bit since I joined this industry. And I think we've helped a lot of consumers in your area, uh, small businesses, homeowners, commercial and residential property owners use this. Um, I know some of them have contacted you individually. Um, and I did provide a list of every homeowner that's done a survey that gave us their, their satisfaction rate. Um, so whether it was their experience with our contractor or experience with Y Green, I provided that in there, in their words. So if there's you know, grammatical errors or spelling errors, that is authentic. Um, and, and you'll see, you'll see their honest reviews of how this program worked for them. So I think 77 property owners voluntarily gave us their survey results. If any of them fall below a seven out of a 10, our CEO directs that we call them and find out what the issue is and how to resolve it. We take con consumer satisfaction, our, our homeowners very seriously. The goal of this program is to keep people in their homes, not to lose their homes. That's why we want you to have a new roof, impact windows, Windows, AC, so you're not out on the street, right? You're able to withstand the next storm or stay in your home uh, when the AC goes out. So, you know, we're really proud of, of what we've done in your community. Y Green here has done about a thousand projects uh, over four years, and this program has continued to grow. Many businesses in your community use this program, uh, and they've called us and said, you know, what's the issue? And I said, you know, please contact your commissioners, express how this program helps you and helps your clients. So I hope, I hope you'll take that away from this today. And we will work with you on improving consumer protections, whether it's through an ordinance or an addendum to our interlocal agreements. But you know, we want to keep this program alive. And however we can do that in working with you all, we're open to that. So thank you all. And, and I'll stay in case you all have questions. Thank you, ma'am. I have Mr. Scott Case. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Scott Case. I live in Palm Bay. I'm a lifelong Brevard resident, also the sales manager with Superior One Roofing. Uh, we do roofing in uh, Brevard, Osceola, Orange, uh, Indian River counties. Uh, we do work with Pace and Y Green quite a bit for consumers that are um, credit challenged um, but need a new roof. Right now, we seem to be uh, at the mercy of insurers. They're calling the shots on ages of roofs. Uh, so these folks that are taking advantage of the program now, sometimes they don't have a choice. They're not financing pools or some luxury item. This is, this is a roof to keep them insured. Um, I think that what you're going to see is, is the insurers that now with they seem to be at 15 years where they're saying this is the cutoff point for a roof. Um, I don't know if that's going to change, but if it does, we're going to see, uh, or they typically, if you can't get a roof, the mortgage company is going to put you with an insurer of last resort. That's going to double to triple the rate of insurance cost that added on to a mortgage. So I mean, basically, you're endangering their mortgage and their home and putting it at risk of foreclosure anyway if they don't get a roof. What the program does, and honestly, I was a realtor for 18 years. I sold over 1,400 homes. I've dealt with a ton of mortgage brokers. Very few of them had the capacity and the program in place that Y Green and the PACE program does to explain this in a way that the consumer can understand it. And I would ask that the commissioners please maybe call Kate. Go through the process as a consumer would. Have it explained to you over the phone. they got a great team. Um, as a sales manager, the folks that, that I deal with and my team, they don't explain this program. There's a nice video that we send out to the consumer if they, if they care to. Uh, log on and put an application in. One of the team members from Y Green or Pace will call them 
uh, as the previous um, speaker said, it's a recorded call. They walk it through. Do the call. Find out if those protections that you're looking for are in place already before you make a decision on this. Uh, I'm on the ground. I see these people face to face. I've seen the folks with tears in their eyes saying, oh my God, I couldn't get a roof any other way. Um, I don't want to prey on your, on your heart or you know, pluck your heartstrings here. Um, this is about people getting things done in a time that we're all financially challenged. And I would just ask that you look at it from a consumer standpoint and see that the protections that are in place already suffice. If not, maybe you know, come up with a different plan, something, but, but please keep the program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, that's the end of public comment cards. I'll, I'll close public comment. Uh, commissioners, Commissioner Tobiah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, all of these PACE providers claim they have protections in place, but... Sorry. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> they're they're, they're, they're self-assessed, self there's no penalty, um, and clearly people are falling through the cracks. We had one individual, and, and if you sit up here and say, hey, listen, we just wasted 20 minutes of time, well, first, first of all, you know, every darn lobbyist for PACE, you know, came into Brevard County, paid paid uh, gas tax, got lunch, all that good nonsense. But second of all, we have somebody that, uh, um, you know, probably served our country and is, who was preyed upon uh, by, uh, not by Y Green, because, you know, Renew, uh, who, who got that, who got that fixed. So there is an individual here. Um, I don't know where anyone is on this one, but there may be a middle ground here, and that is all of, some of the protections that they mentioned, maybe more, uh, could be added. We could add them to the interlocal agreement and then assess that six or probably 12 months from now and look at uh, to see if, if they're following that and if there, are more, um, if there are more issues of people losing their houses. I'm good with that. Um, I'm also good with doing away from the program for the same reason that I mentioned before, because quite simply, um, this is, as uh, Chair Pritchett mentioned, these folks can't get loans, and the fact that the government is backing uh, a loan is probably not in the best interest of either them uh, or us. So either way, um, if you want to go with the middle ground, I certainly would ask that we put people together. That would be uh, some of the industry, some folks that want to regulate the industry a little bit more, like uh, Chairman Fine, I'm sure he would be more than willing to uh, sit down with that. And maybe uh, some folks that are experts uh, on the assessment, like the tax collector's office, and seeing if we can put down some things in that ordinance or interlocal and certainly some uh, penalties should they not follow. This is like having a speed limit and saying, well, if you go over the speed limit, we're not really going to fine you. And unfortunately, uh, that's, that, that's what's happening here. So there needs to be some penalties uh, in place. I understand the legislature's trying to do it, but uh, you know, Chairman Fine only can pass 90% of his bills, not 100%. This is, this is one I would have liked to have seen uh, pass. So I, I'm wherever the uh, wherever or if you guys want to continue with this program the way it is just understand that this problem is only going to get larger so those are, those are the options here I wanted this discussion and I appreciate everyone taking time because uh, I know I mentioned a lot of this stuff before um, for you hearing this again Mr. Smith thank you madam chair and well I'm not quite the ardor of a rich workman or um, Commissioner Lober I will attempt to state my thoughts on this when i first heard this was coming up and i heard the horror stories i thought wow we got to protect these poor people that are being taken advantage of but like most issues it has two sides and i i listened to and read and um then i saw the numbers and i think there's been 13 cases in this county where people feel like they've been taken advantage of or have had a problem uh, but I think that there's been some things that have occurred that tighten up the situations so that those events wouldn't occur again. That's one. And two, um, that's 13 out of 600 plus. So they've got a pretty good track record. If you're, if you're talking about percentage wise, and that's over my head too, um, it's a very small percentage that have been affected. So 
Um, I'm looking at this thing and I know that there are people out there that need roofs, that, that would like to have impact windows, that would like to have solar. All those improvements would qualify under PACE. And PACE offers them affordable financing to get those things done, whereas they might not be able to do it any other way. Um, it allows these people to improve the value of their homes. It increases the resiliency of their homes. It gives them a measure of peace when a hurricane or a major storm comes, knowing they've got a new roof or impact windows. Um, it also creates lots of jobs, as this gentleman, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but uh, as he mentioned, it, it puts an awful lot of people to work as well. And it gives them jobs that may not be available otherwise because the people couldn't get financing. So I think that's an important issue. Um, I would guess it's created millions, maybe even billions to our economy with those 600 um, cases that we have in this county and it's regrettable that we've had 13 people that have not fared so well but again I think from the people I've talked to most of those issues have been tightened up so it wouldn't happen again and we've just heard from one lady here that said that they're going to take care of that so that that person isn't um, going to be negatively impacted from here on out so um, it seems to me that there are a lot of protections in place. It offers an awful lot of positives to people that couldn't otherwise improve their homes. Um, so my, my bottom line issue is let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. If there's some kind of a middle ground that we can reach that Commissioner Tobiah would be happy with, I'm 100% behind that. So um, I'm not, I'm not going to vote to to do away with this because I, I certainly don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Commissioner Lover. And I'll just circle back to what I said kind of at the beginning of this item. If, if you want to introduce some sort of consumer protections, bring them forth. If you're ready to put together a group, I think you proposed one consist of a representative from one of the constitutional offices um, and some other individuals. If you want to make that proposal tonight, we can put the group together, uh, kind of give them a general outlay of what it is we're looking for them to come up with and then have it come back to the commission if you'd prefer to sort of do that independently and come back however you want to do it i'm not opposed to putting protections in place that are reasonable and appropriate but i, I just can't do away with it on account of some folks having had a bad experience even if it wasn't their fault um, to me unless someone's legally prohibited from entering into a contract if they're adjudicated incompetent or something like that different story, but by and large, if someone wants to enter into a contract that perhaps you or I wouldn't necessarily enter into, that's, you know, that's their right. Um, I might discourage them from doing it in a particular instance, but I don't know that it's my place to tell someone that they shouldn't enter into a particular contract where they have the ability to do due diligence on it, uh, where they're not, certainly in the bulk of the cases, anything approaching predatory practices. Uh, if there's a concern that there are some small number that, that are predatory or that are misleading the, the public, then you know, help us come up with some solutions in terms of what we can require of them to sort of offset that risk or to eliminate that risk, and I'll, I'll probably be right there with you. But as Commissioner Smith said, I'm, I'm not ready to throw out the baby with bathwater, certainly not today. Okay, let me throw out uh, just a couple thoughts, and I, I don't know where their interest rates are on. The, I think the avenue of this is kind of what hangs me up. So if, if you have a mortgage on a house and you go take out another loan and you renege on that loan, they can't take your house if, if you're paying your mortgage. Same as if you're in trouble with the law, by the way, but I'm not going to teach you that lesson. <laughs> but so that, that's, that's kind of the thing. But when you do this and you end up with a tax lien, they, they can sell your house off to pay your taxes. So that's kind of where it, it kind of hangs a little bit. So my question is, is this truly affordable or is it just sure financing because it goes on the tax rolls and they know they're going to be able to take the house as, as some type of collateral if, if it gets um, hung up on? So that's my question is I, I don't know how you're running these, these loans. I don't know what the interest rates are. I don't know if they are. I don't know. I just don't know if they're fair. But since we have so many people that are struggling, it's like when we had the, the great housing boom and everybody was, was buying houses and, and they couldn't afford those either. They were still given the loans. 
So um, I, I'm still siding with Commissioner to buy on this, but I, I think uh, maybe I need a better education on what those things are, and if they're not in place, they're things that definitely need to, need to be in place. They're, they're, I don't know what your interest rates are, but there should be a cap on them. And so that we know that the, the consumer who might be in a, in a place that really is desperate to get some money, that, that there are some protections in place for them, because that's why we have these protections in place. So, and then my other thing is, is if we're gonna do these, they should maybe be for, for house sustaining projects, roof and ACs. I'm not sure I agree that solar panels should be bought with these or, 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 or windows, because if they can't afford to get a loan for those things, they're not things that absolutely makes their ability to live in the home um, sustainable. I, I'm probably not real comfortable with that either, because I think this is risky for the consumer. And there, there's, there, it has to be, otherwise you would just go get a competitive market loan. So that's my thought on it, but commissioners, what is your pleasure? Mr. Tobaya. Madam Chair, will you give me six months here to meet with these folks and bring back a proposal that integrates many of the suggestions uh, that were brought here? And if you have any because of Sunshine, just throw them in a board report. Uh, okay. But I certainly will uh, get with uh, Commissioner, uh, sorry, Chairman Fine on this one, uh, because I know that, you know, he's a fan of the program, but also he understands that there needs to be uh, regulation on board uh, for consumer uh, protection on this one. So, um, if that, if 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 you're good with that, I would be more than willing to lead that, you know, sure. charge. And uh, again, please bring that this up any at any meeting. I'm more than willing to integrate that that one that. You just mentioned about solar panels is one I hadn't thought of, but certainly is a, a very good idea and one that I certainly will move forward with. So um, again, thank you guys for taking the time. There's certainly one gentleman out there that uh, fell through the cracks uh, and, and our time here definitely helped him out quite a bit. Okay, uh, I have one card that got tucked in with the J5. It's Mr. Ryan Bartkiss. Did you want to speak still? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Yeah, I would. I would go for that. Um, if you wanted six months to tighten up anything that you find that is detrimental to someone, that's again, I would remind everybody that we're only talking about 13 out of 600 plus. So it's not like it's a lot of predators out there preying on unsuspecting homeowners. So, but I think that there's room for improvement. And if you guys can come up with something that would make you feel better um, without being overly onerous to either side, I'm certainly in favor of that. And as far as solar panels go, well, I'm a big fan of solar. My, my last month's bill was uh, $26 and 11 house, and 11 cents. And the one before that was $9. So solar panels save people a lot of money. She can afford them. And right, and so if somebody can otherwise afford them but can afford them with this then I don't see that that's a bad investment I just don't want anyone to lose madam chair I just don't want anyone to lose their house because they have pretty solar panels in a that's low a and a yeah right. so, no. so that's you know and we already we, you and I already got subsidized when we put up those solar panels because right. we got a 30 percent rebate from the from the federal government but either way I think we're all on the I think we're all on the same page but here. I would also remind you and everybody else that we're dealing with adults here and we need to have protections in place for people that might be preyed on. But the other side of that coin is they are adults and they're quite capable of making decisions based on the information that they're given. Yeah, so if they want solar panels and they want to use this loan, I don't see that there's a, there's a downside for them. But it's, it's up to them. Madam Chair, it was this board though that gave the authority for those contracts to take place. Had this board not taken that action, then the legislator the legislature decided that might have been the one good thing in 2010, the bill allowed us to authorize the mm -hmm. program. So short of us authorizing the program, this wouldn't have become available because of course this is on the tax right. bill. And but again, I think, we're all on the, I think we're all on the same page. I think we ended up in the same, in the same place and I will bring back again, uh, just for suggest, you know, if there are any suggestions, please bring them to any meeting. I'm more than willing to integrate this, not only good for the uh, industry, but good for the consumer. Again, thank you so much for this time, and I'll bring back a work product here uh, in six months. Yeah, I don't want to repeat most of the things that um, we said, but I think Commissioner Lober and Commissioner Smith hit the nail on the head. I mean, if we put protections in place, we would make people, 
you know, have to clear it through us before they sign a car note. Because, again, with anything, there's a risk. And it, it's sad to say that people did fall through, or someone did fall through the cracks. But, I mean, we have to assume that people know what they're, what they're signing when they sign up for a loan. I like the idea of a disclosure to be filed with, you know, I don't know if it's filed with us, if it's filed with the tax collector. But I like the idea of that so they understand the terms. Um, I have no problem with consumer protections to put in place, but I know I know of someone that helped out that couldn't afford an air conditioner and was single, newly single mom, that she was able to get a pace loan and it and it helped her out significantly. Not here locally, but in Florida. So I know that it's it's helped the right people, and they have to be able to pay the loan back. So or they wouldn't even qualify. So I'm I'm a fan of the program, and and if we need to make a few tweaks to make people more comfortable with it, I'm good with that. So, Mr. Tobai, you're just going to bring something back in about six months, correct, sir? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you for the right. opportunity. Thank you. We're going to move to item G5. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, October 1st, uh, Commissioner Lover introduced an item seeking an identical program to the one uh, that is here. In May of this year, after repeated complaints, Commissioner Lover reintroduced the item. Uh, it failed uh, two to three. So you ask, why am I doing this again? Because now we have data to back up um, the statements that, that were put forth. I've passed out a, a graph. I attached this graph to uh to the agenda item guys uh we've gone above or we staff has gone above and beyond by opening the uh, landfills to a larger uh, time so waste management would have more opportunities and if you look clearly waste management is getting worse they weren't good to begin with and they're getting worse and we, we brought it up we've i don't want to say we've made threats or ultimatums we just said we are going to exercise parts of the contract. The exact same way waste management exercised parts of the contract when they pulled out of it to receive a 39% increase. So everything that was requested by Commissioner Lober was what waste management uh, argued uh, uh, for. Uh, keep in mind, I don't want to have to go over this again, but waste management is not <laughs> a mom and pop company. Their CEO last year made $12.4 million. The year before that, they made $11.8 million. This is a large company that pays their employees an absolute ton of money that can afford to pick up the trash that, that we contract with them. And we need to exercise the contract when they don't meet that uh, standard. Again. I don't want to have to go over this, but it's not up there, and I probably should have added it. Uh, the number of verified missed pickups over the last couple months has more than doubled. This is getting worse. So I would ask that um, I would ask that we exercise this part of the contract and authorize staff to create and implement a program with formalized procedures, incentivizing reporting of future solid waste collection items and delays with payment to parties reporting legitimate complaints. Direct staff to verify, claim, and withhold maximum justifiable liquidation damages valued allowed under the county's contract with waste management until further direction of the uh, BOCC. Lastly, authorize the chair to execute all documents necessary uh, uh, for these changes. So uh, should you... Sorry. My bad. Thank you. Again, these were verified missed pickups. These are not complaints. These are ones that have been verified by county staff. You can see that they're increasing. Okay, Commissioner Lober. Commissioner Tobai, I think um, this is hardly going to be a surprise to you. Uh, I think you, you can guess very easily where I am with this particular agenda item. 
I do want to add a, a thought that came to me actually, um, mulling over your agenda item here today. You know, you'd mentioned a few moments ago that they're hardly a mom and pop shop. Uh, the 39% increase. I've had constituents ask me where that money has gone, and my latest answer to them is, I don't know where all of it's gone, but I know where some of it's gone. Um, I actually learned about this through county staff that appears that there was quite a bit of lobbying done by the, the waste collection industry uh, to amend Chapter 403 of Florida statutes. I'm shocked that we haven't had many news articles or really hardly any news articles on this. Um, what matters and really the operative portion uh, from what I gather is that it would require us giving waste management in this case three years of notice before terminating our contract with them and we'd be obligated to pay them, and I'm going to quote right out of the, the statutory text, an amount equal to the company's preceding 18 months gross receipts for the displaced service in the displaced area. So we would have to give them three years of notice and pay them 18 months of their gross earnings in order to get rid of them. This totally not only denigrates home rule, nukes home rule, but it also frankly interferes with freedom of contract, which as you gather from the last agenda item is something that, that I feel strongly about. Frankly, it is one of the least capitalistic laws or amendments to a law that I've seen come out of Tallahassee and it's an incredible disappointment that our legislature thought that was something that was appropriate to put in place. Uh, but I, I can tell you that my, my level of complaints from my constituents is at an all-time high with respect to waste management. Uh, while I, I do appreciate waste management uh, appearing to do what they can do on a case-by-case -case basis and helping some of these folks with respect to addressing the missed pickups, they, they shouldn't be occurring in the first place. And instead of spending money on lobbying to screw the consumers and to screw the constituents here and to basically extend the middle finger to home rule, that same amount of money should have been used to increase the wages to a more competitive level and actually get drivers. I, I get that Amazon is a problem for them. I get that it's not as sexy and glamorous to drive around a, a green truck, even if you know green is a, a lovely color, um, as it is perhaps to, to be the cool guy dropping off gizmos uh, and quadcopters for kids to enjoy at the holidays. I get that. Um, but the problem is with any amount of money being spent on lobbying, that money has an opportunity cost, and if they have problems picking up and servicing the areas that they're obligated to pick up and service, all of the lobbying money should be going to that instead. So you understand where I'm at. I'm not going to repeat what I've said in prior meetings. I'm certainly supportive of this. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lober, I think your, your district and my district's kind of been hit the hardest with a lot of mess. So here's, I, I had um, called our, our manager a while ago and I told him that I'm about like here if you would just let them know, I'm gonna give them 60 days to kind of get this turned around. And I think the end of that 60 days is, is August 20. Um, here's, I know there's problems with getting staff. I, I know this is statewide, but here's, here's my problem is my community's just getting jerked around. You know, I, I have calls continually. I took the garbage down, they didn't pick it up for four days. And that's just, that's just it's just uncomfortable. So I, I get it, but I think you're in over your heads. So I don't know how to fix all that. Um, I, I think, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you're gonna have to invest more money, get more drivers, or we need to renegotiate a contract. But I, I think um, I'm gonna agree to a maximum penalty as of August 20. Um, I'm hoping that you get something settled by then. I, I think that we're gonna hear from you. I have some cards as well. But either that or I think you guys need to come up and renegotiate a new contract, um, probably for less money of what you can do. I don't think you're going to pull this off. And, and I know it's a big job, but I, I just can't have my community keep putting things out and just con continually calling me saying that it's a week later, they haven't picked it up. And, and there's whole streets, and I know you're trying. No doubt in my mind you are trying, because this is a difficult job. But something's got to be done with a fix. Someone's got to have to come up with an idea and figure something out. I know one day a week isn't popular, but maybe that's where we need to go. So at least they know they're getting the garbage picked up that one day, and this contract drastically reduces in cost. I'm probably not comfortable in picking up funds to pay the people that complain. I don't think that's a good idea. I, I think that initiates a whole other thing that I don't want to deal with. So I think if we impose this, I want the payments to go to the county 
to stay in a fund so that when we go to negotiate a new contract later, it'll, it'll be there to help or, or if you guys come up with something different. But that's my thinking on it right now, but um, I definitely don't mind getting more education. Commissioner Smith. Do we have cards? Yes, sir. I'd like to hear the cards before I speak. Yes, sir, and I will keep your light on. Mr. Nathan Slusher. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Nathan Slusher at 860 Allendale Street in Titusville. Um, first of all, I want to make, make it crystal clear that I understand there's an issue between the county and the waste management. My only specific issue is the incentive, and I'm strictly here to speak for the citizens' behalf, not, not on the contract. Um, reading through the legislative text, I'd like to believe that this proposal is written with good intentions to only hold waste management accountable after the in increase in the contract. Uh, at first glance, the proposal seems great for the citizens, but it does fall short in a few areas that concern me. Uh, fiscal impact, first, is quoted as unknowable. We're just supposed to agree with it and move forward and hope that it never costs the taxpayer a dime. Um, not even a guess is attributed. Worst case scenario, it's not even put on there. So unknowable should always be a red flag. I pulled the U.S. Census data to find out how many houses we're actually talking about. I don't have waste management specific number, um, but according to the census, there's 90,000 roughly houses in unincorporated Brevard. So if we only have 300 missed, that's 0.0003% as a problem. And I'm sure it may be more. I'm sure there's plenty that are unverified, but it seems to be a very, very small issue. Um, the plan to withhold it is not applicable to rentals. It specifically states in the text that we're not gonna apply this to rentals. And if somebody who rents a house, which is 25.7% of our entire county, has a missed pickup, the landlord gets money instead of the people with the trash. Uh, back payments are proposed all the way back to August of 2020. Am I my point with the incentives is that if something goes wrong and waste management goes to court and wins, then the taxpayers pick up all the costs. It's not, it, that is my fear, is that something goes wrong, the county loses, waste management wins, and now the taxpayers have to pay. That's my biggest issue with the, with the entire thing. And I want to reemphasize, I do believe it was built, the proposal, the plan was built to hold them accountable, but I really want to take a look at the cost it could possibly affect the citizens if something were to go wrong. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Sandra Sullivan. As a Sandra Sullivan, South Patrick Shores, uh, as a community leader in Unincorporated on Beachside, there's a lot of residents that don't know where to uh, report. Um, and I would strongly urge the the county to have an online reporting. A lot of people use their phones and apps. It's much easier to just plug something in, their address, and put in information in a centralized place. Right now, they don't know whether to, you know, where to go on the county site to where to report missed pickup. I find I end up doing it uh, on our Facebook page for our community when I see people talking about it. We have recently had our trash sit for four days on our street, um, on multiple streets. There is a degradation of service. Uh, another aspect that concerns me as well is there was a recent Florida Today article talking about if you have a wash machine size air, uh, amount of, of yard waste that you have to call it in now, and that's exceedingly uh, inconvenient from what we've done in the past. My yard, on a weekly basis, generates that much yard waste. So that's a degradation in service from my perspective and a pretty uh, big one if I have to call in like every week or every other week, you know, to have my yard waste picked up. So far, they've, they've continued to pick it up as normal, but that uh, is a concern for us with our yard waste. And I would not be in favor of of, of the residents getting money for submitting complaints, I think it should go to the county. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Gregory Galetha? George, George Galeco. Oh, George. George, your G looks like a Y. How are you doing? Good to see your friendly face, sir. Sorry about the shaky handwriting. Age is starting to catch up with me. I understand. 
Good morning. For the record, my name's George Glutko from Suntree. I wish to share a few thoughts with you today regarding the County Solid Waste and Recycling Program. We are in uncharted waters with the China pandemic. No one asked for this. It impacts all of us negatively. We live in a great nation with free elections. We elect you into office to guide us as a society through difficult times, to support us and its industries that provide us with quality of life in a time of need such as now. In Bavard County, our population is over 610,000. Waste management touches well over 100 thousand residents and commercial businesses a week. That's garbage twice weekly, recycling once weekly, yard waste once weekly, bulk waste once weekly, bulk trash once weekly, white goods, electronics, and cart repair weekly, commercial businesses from one time to six times per week. We have a potential of two million touches a month. Four to 600 issues may be logged per month. Many are for service requests. Many are residents non-compliance issues. And some are weather related, mechanical issues, or traffic incidents in the last and in the last year, COVID related. When you look at the number of issues that come in on a monthly basis, you're looking at five decimal points of 1%. Although our government started out with good intentions, it extended into an employment nightmare. All industries are suffering today. You are government. You can help by enforcing your own collection rules you negotiated in the contract. The slippery slope. Creating incentives to complain. Not enforcing your own contract collection rules. Educating the general public. I'm sorry, George, your time's up. Let's Commissioner Tavaya. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple questions about this China pandemic, how it's negatively impacted and everyone's suffering. I pulled your SEC filings. Last quarter, revenues were up 185 million in your company. Can you explain how you're suffering? Your words, not mine. And according to SEC filings, again, yours, not mine. You were up 185 million. Let me explain it to you this way, Commissioner. Six companies in 2013 attended a pre-bid meeting. Three submitted proposals. Only one company committed to a $50 million capital investment to help the county to reach its goal. Sir, this, this, sir this that is isn't a, my question. My this, question, my let, question let is- Let me finish my statement, please. You, you're, if yeah. you answer my question, you're more than welcome to. I'm answering your question. You made $185 million I'm more. I'm answering your question. Madam Chair, can, can we ask to, answer, to ask the question? We gave him his three minutes to, for BS because that's what we got. The problem is they're making excuses and they're not picking up the trash. And, and we have customers. Here's what's happened. They're claiming they don't have drivers and they're picking districts in which the commissioners are not supportive and those are the ones that are getting shortchanged. And last time was Commissioner Lober's district. They decided not to send out, they, they were short drivers and Commissioner Lo Lober's district, I'm, I'm next. And uh, until we do something, this type of behavior is just gonna co uh, continue. And yes, it may be 0.03 or 0.05, but the problem is when this stuff is sitting out there and our consumers are paying 40% more, the fact that there's, 
they're suffering and their profits are going up, they're suffering and their CEOs are making tens of millions of dollars, I have trouble answering these uh, these emails, I, I, I just, I, and these Commissioner, phone calls. Commissioner, may I Madam say Chair. something? So I, I, I'd like to, I'd like may, to. May, may I say something? It's your, it's your we made a $50 here. million dollar investment in this community to support your infrastructure. Without that weather all, financial weather all, this could have never happened. Yeah, there George, were three I, other companies that had the same I, opportunity gonna, and they didn't. I know, I'm gonna have to call your time. I think we're not getting anywhere on this path, but I have Ms. Dina Ryder coming, Hicks come, Ryder coming up next and, and I'm gonna let her continue the conversation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and distinguished members of the Commission. I'm Dina Ryder Hicks, Public Affairs Manager for Waste Management. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Uh, Commissioner, I would like to, uh, Commissioner Tobias, if I may point out, uh, you are absolutely correct um, with, with regard to our earnings. And we are a for-profit company, and I will not apologize for that. And you are also correct, sir, in your assertion that I believe your words were, uh, we pay our people a ton of money. You are absolutely correct. We do, we pay our people very, very well. And unfortunately, the situation we are facing in now is a shortage of drivers. It's not a lack of equipment, it's not a lack of infrastructure, it is a lack of drivers that has been the result of a multiple uh, array of, of issues that I think we're all well aware of, that we've all experienced, not only in our industry, but also other industries. We've taken that ton of money that we are making and here's what we've done. We have raised driver pay significantly to the fact that we are among the top, if not the top, uh, compensator in the industry with regard to our full package that we offer with our compensation. We have instituted substantial signing bonuses for drivers and technicians here in Brevard County. Some of those positions come with signing bonuses of $5,000. We have enhanced our employee referral program to encourage our employees, the people that already work for us, to bring more drivers and technicians to us. We are paying as a company for college education for all of our employees and our dependents. If you do not have a CDL and you are a promising candidate, we will also pay for your CDL training and your CDL licensing to bring more drivers on board. We are facing this, this critical shortage of drivers and that is the crux of the issue. Now, we have made gains in the northern part of the county with our Cocoa Hauling District. We have five individuals that have been offered positions that are pending a background check. We have two new individuals, new drivers that have started this week. We have two new drivers starting Monday. In the south, for the central and southern portion of Brevard, we have made 14 offers to individuals. Eight of those offers, those individuals, are now in training. Six of those individuals are pending background checks. Provided that they pass those checks, those individuals will go in our training program. When you're driving an 11-ton truck, as I'm sure you're aware, you don't hire an individual on day one and put them immediately into the truck. We have a very comprehensive 90-day training program, and to make sure that when we put these individuals in the truck it is as safe as possible to do so and safety is an issue where we will absolutely not compromise so please know commissioners there is a path forward we are extending offers to individuals we are doing all that we can to recruit more candidates and Commissioner Lober I would like to thank you once again publicly sir I know we did this in private as well thank you for the role that you placed in helping to reduce these incentive programs that were coming into the state of Florida to help bring more individuals back into the the workforce and with that I thank you very much for your time miss miss ma'am let me ask you a couple questions yes ma'am so if if you just hire I'm sorry all those positions and you have some more coming online are you gonna be able to hit that that 60-day deadline I threw out early we are really pushing for that commissioner okay. absolutely because that we will are, save this whole thing if you, you do bet. that then the penalties won't come in or anything absolutely okay. we have a member of our, our Florida leadership team here with us this morning he is hearing everything that you're saying and he will be working with his colleagues we unfortunately as you said commissioner this is a statewide and a nationwide issue and it's not just remain to waste management every single hauler and potential 
potential contractor is facing this issue. Um, Mike Lewis is here, our senior district manager, Pete Duddy, our district manager. They have been given carte blanche from their supervisor to get whatever subcontractors we can in the area. We've brought DCI in. We told DCI, give us everything you got. Give us everything you have, every piece of equipment, every driver. We will pay your price for those individuals. We've brought DCI drivers in to collect more of the clam yard waste, and we said, give us more. And they said to us, we've given you everything we have. We have two trucks sitting right now because we cannot find drivers for them. If they find drivers, we've got them. So, right. Commissioner, absolutely. We are bringing how, in drivers from other areas as we can. How many more positions do you need to fill? Mike and Pete, can you provide some insight on that? Six north, four for south. How many, how many positions do you have currently have advertised out there that you're trying to fill? We have multiple positions advertised um, from entry level technicians through senior technicians um, on the mechanic side, on okay. the driver side. It's everything from driver helpers all the way up through senior You've drivers. You've advertised all those positions? We are. They are advertised not only on wastemanagement.com, they are advertised on multiple national job boards. Commissioner, we have purchased billboards along I-95. I hope you have seen them, okay. that we are advertising our open positions. So everybody that applies, you're, you're going ahead and trying to run through the path to get them busy driving. Right. Absolutely. Anyone that can that, that um, you know meets our qualifications, of course, we are conducting interviews. We've conducted uh, local job fairs as well, okay. where we've been able to hire individuals on the spot, and if they qualify, we're putting them through our background check and okay. our training program. So I don't know where everybody else is, but hopefully you get that because this of August 20 is going to be a little expensive. I, for you, I so. understand. So I understand, um, just so you know, if if you do all that and you get it going, but you've got to understand, I really think right now you're over your heads. So if you don't pull this off, we need some type of plan and we're doing moving forward because I can't continue to have the community kind of suffer through this, just so you know. Um, I'm going to do Commissioner Zonka. I keep, keep hitting my button and I don't. Uh, and I, I thank you for your contact with my office when I have complaints and when I have needs. And I feel bad because you're the one that takes the brunt of it, anybody that comes up to this microphone and defends waste management. But I'm even at my wit's end. I'm getting to the point to where I get tired of looking at the trash cans out, even in my own neighborhood, and because it's late. And if, you know, subcontractors was the issue before, why wasn't waste management subbing out before? There, there is always the right number. There is always the right number that, and again, you, you have a competitive wage, whatever. You, you, if you had that right number, if your company had that right number, you would get the drivers. That's the bottom line. And, I, I don't know what it's going to take, obviously, I, 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 but I, for the first time, am, am pretty much done defending waste management. You know, I made a call, and it's not, it's not um, scientific because I don't have numbers. I made a call to um, another elected official in the city of Palm Bay, and they said they're not having issues with Republic. And I, and I don't like to pitch up against them, but they just took over your old contract and had to come in with all new infrastructure. We were told multiple times how they were going to fail. And while they still have some things to work out, they don't have the number of complaints, at least according to my non-scientific opinion from somebody elected over there. So I'm just, I'm, it makes it really hard to defend you because you guys were so good. And now when you're failing and you're failing, you know, after months and after we, we keep asking and we keep begging, you know, please fix this, please fix this. And we, it's excuse after excuse, it's getting harder to defend. So I know what your company's capable of, but it's really hard to swallow. You know, and even more difficult when we look at your profits from the past year and what your CEO makes, it makes it even more sad to me. But so I'm prepared to take whatever action the board majority wants to take at this time. Um, thank you for letting us speak to you. But hold, Commissioner Smith, you have a light on for her, sir? I do. Do you? I do. Oh, you're kind of rolling up, so I'm trying to figure yeah, out where I'm you're trying. popping in new here. Yeah, please. Okay. Commissioner Smith and Commissioner Lober and then Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm frustrated and you know that I've had some issues uh, in my district. I walk my dog and I see uh, particularly uh, trash, not trash, um, recycle. The, there's one pile that had some oak in it and I went there with my chainsaw back the first weekend in May in a hurry because I thought you guys would come Tuesday, which is your normal day for that. and so I 
went through that pile and got as much oak wood for my fireplace as I could. And because I thought, well, boy, if I dilly dally, it's going to be gone Tuesday. Well, as of about a week ago, that pile was still there. Um, so I see it in my district as well. But I, I'm not as emotional as my fellow commissioners. I'm not happy with your performance, but I'm not emotionally involved. I, I look at this as a black and white thing. We have a contract with you. If you're failing the contract, there's remedies. And if you guys can live with those fines, I, I think I saw where, was it $39,000 that, that they've paid in fines, something like that. So that's not pocket change. For a company that makes as much money as you, you, somebody could argue that it's pocket change. But that represents probably the salary of a driver in, in a year or close to it. And that's only for the first six months, I think. So you're business people. You're going to fix you, you know you got a problem. And you're working hard to fix it. And I have every faith that a company is as profitable as you guys are and as big as you guys are, you're going to figure it out where your heads are going to roll. That's, that's life in the big city. Just like if you fail the contract, we're going to levy fines against you and you're going to pay them because it's part of the contract. So I just think that you guys need to get, get your act in, in gear and, and fix it. That's the bottom line. And if we have a deadline of whatever it is, August something, August 20th, so um, we'll see what happens, but that's a month from now, and hopefully you can make everybody happy up here. At least I know that you're going to make every effort to do that. So that's, that's what I have to say. I want to address a few things. I want to address a few things that uh, came up during public comment and then also offer some thoughts of my own here. Can we do all that in a minute? If you got something for Harbin to do to buy, I got one more card and then I'm going to let you have first dibs after that. Is okay. that good? Um, yeah, that's fine. I do have one question though. Um, how many waste management employees are here? Are here? Right now, half a dozen? One, two, three. Uh, six, sir. Do any of them have their CDLs? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'll save the rest. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Lober. Commissioner Tobias. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, right. ma'am. Thank you all very much thank for your you. time and for your support. Thank you thank for you. your help. I have Ms. Sarah Wagner. And then Commissioner Lober, you're next. Thank you. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Um, I didn't know this was on the agenda. I was actually here for something else, but... Um, I actually live on Dump Road, so Adamson Road. I live directly across from the dump. I own three homes in District um, 1. And I can tell you that waste management misses a pickup every single month, at least once. So if that's just my home, and I've never reported it. So I live directly across from the dump, and I'm affected that much. And I can tell you that there is, on that one road, there is constantly debris from the trucks that never gets picked up. There's constantly yard pickup that never gets picked up. And that's on Dump Road. You can drive down that road every single day. What's your excuse for that road? That's one road in Brevard County. And I pay astronomical amounts of, of taxes in this county. That's all I have to say. Ms. Wagner, if you would always call me when it's missed, that would help me out greatly with this. Okay, sorry, okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, that's the end of public comment. Commissioner Lober, as right. I promised. I appreciate it, um, Madam Chair. So a as to that area, actually, it's interesting. I was over there, I think it was last week, and there was a truck, and I'll, I'll, spare waste management, I'm not gonna apply it was their truck, it was actually just a pickup truck, and there was a fridge that someone thought would be good to stick vertically on the back of their truck. I am glad I left following distance because it came right off and shattered all over the street. Um, I've got great dash cam footage. I don't know that it's a public record, but if someone wants it, I'll give it to them anyway. Um, I want to address a few things that were mentioned um, by Ms. Sullivan uh, and by at least one of the other speakers on this item. First is to the website. I, I just sitting up here, I went on Google and I'm sure you can do it on Yahoo or DuckDuckGo or whatever your preferred search engine is. If you just type in Miss Pickup Brevard County, the first item that comes up, the first result uh, is brevardfl.gov. It says curbside collection. If you click that link on the header, uh, the far right of the header, it says file a complaint. So I, I know I talked with Mr. Abate some months back and asked him to 
either make that, that option available online or to see about having it more prominent. It's, it's pretty prominent on there. If you go to the solid waste um, portion of our website, there is at the very top right a um, actually pretty little icon with a pen and a sheet of paper as well saying file a complaint. So it is there, but if you don't want to navigate from solid waste to curbside collection, if you just Google uh, Miss Pickup Brevard County, that alone seems to pull it up, at least for me right now. Um, I'll say with respect to Dina, if I can use your first name, I like you a lot. I think you're a very nice person. Your company, I, I don't like so much. Um, so don't take this personally. I think if they had you know, anyone shy of God Almighty, they, they couldn't do anything in your position beyond what you've done. Um, as we understand now that there are at least half a dozen or there are half a dozen waste management employees there, at least some of whom have their CDL, I'm praying to God we don't have any missed pickups today. Because if we do, there's no reason we should have anyone with a CDL from waste management sitting here uh, basically to try to explain or justify why we're in the position that we're in. Um, as to the, the concern over an unknowable or unknown financial or fiscal impact, the unknown is as to the amount of damages that waste management would have to remit or credit the county. So it's an unknown in the positive in our direction, not an unknown in the negative. As far as it not being applicable to rentals, in a way that's true and in a way it's really not true. We don't exclude rentals. The bottom line is we have to have some logical means and easy means to implement a, a program of this sort. So the rate payer, the person who actually pays the bill is the one that would receive the credit. If someone wants to negotiate their lease where if a credit is extended, that that credit's transferred, we're not gonna interfere with freedom of contract with respect to that, I can't imagine. So anyone whose lease is up, if they contemplating that we may take an action that would create a program like this, if you wanna ask them to throw that in, go for it, I, I hope they do. Um, as far as the county losing a lawsuit, there has to be a cause of action specified for a lawsuit. Some specific cause of action. You don't just sue someone because you don't like something. There's got to be some specificity there. I'm not aware of a particular cause of action that would be a great fit for them. I mean, really what it amounts to is us exercising our existing contractual rights and remedies. And if they don't like that, they shouldn't have entered into the contract. The, the, the question for me is, is what our limit is. Um, I, I took years back my undergraduate degree that's rather useless and forced me to go to graduate school to get something I could actually earn a paycheck with is in French language and literature. Everyone's heard of deja vu. Uh, this is a little different today. It's deja entendu, which means I've already heard it. I've, I'm hearing the same things today that I heard the last two times I brought this up. I, I wish Commissioner Tobias success where I failed on this twice. but. I'm looking up here, I just Googled as well, because Google, uh, maybe not in corporate policy is my buddy, but at least in terms of giving me good results is my buddy. Uh, definition of insanity. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And the question I have, and I'm sure there are folks that think that I'm completely off my rocker, but are we, as a commission, as a body, are we insane? I think we have an opportunity to show the public that we're not, that we're not gonna do the same thing, or in this case, and in action, we're, we're not going to do anything as we've never done anything on this, on this topic and expecting the service to magically change. I, I'm at a point where I, I think we need to do something. I like the folks, at least with whom I've interacted, that work for waste management that are here today, um, but either they don't have the authority or they don't have the ability to change it. Either which way, this, this needs, to, to, have, this needs to, to result in something occurring that will change the, the equation for them. Because if we just say, bad, don't do it again, bad, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna change, they're not. You can say 60 days, you can say 30 days, you can say 90 days. I have absolutely no hope that this is gonna be any different. I really don't. So it sounds like Commissioner Zonka may be on board. It sounds like Commissioner Tobias certainly on board and it sounds like I'm certainly on board. If one of you guys wants to, to take the honor and make the motion, I'll second it. Or if the other one of you wants to second it, I'm, I'm ready to go today. Commissioner Tobias. Thank you, Madam Chair. And. Uh, Chairwoman, I, I understand where you're going, giving them 60 days, but unfortunately, what you're threatening, we're already doing. We're already assessing a fine. The issue is, and it couldn't have been any better, one of your constituents. I was going to, what I did is I didn't talk to y'all, but I was letting them know I was about to jump in with what y'all want to do as of August 20th. So that was, that was all that was, is I was getting ready to jump in with, with the other I, things. So, so could, could we could 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 I ask two things? Because I, I know y'all were going to bring this up. I, I, I already just, have a I already have a motion on the the floor. Uh -huh. I'd be more than willing to amend it. What I would like is contemplated in that motion that 
the board brings it back to us so it's all ready to go on that day and I'd like to us I'd like to us to set a number here um, you have you have the chart here um, you know a hundred is when we first mentioned it I, I, I don't know what that magic number is but I know that the number keeps on getting larger and larger and larger and again these are verified numbers so these aren't numbers who are calling uh, these are ones that we've all agreed upon so I'm just going to throw I'm just going to throw if it's any more than a hundred uh, after the next uh, after would you say August 20th yeah that's uh, exactly 60 days from when I called so. I would amend my motion to mm -hmm. begin the program after August 20th should the uh, number of missed pickups be uh, any larger than a verified, sorry, verified Ms. Pick has to be any larger than 100. Okay. Commissioner Tobias, my only other thing is I would like the money to come back to the county because I have a film we're going to have to spend a lot of money getting a new contract and I would like to start working. So with for, that. it's still going to cost them. They're going to have so to get for, on for, it. For, for, no, for a number of reasons, unfortunately, that, that causes issues. And here's the number of reasons. And uh, Commissioner Lober mentioned one of them already is we can <laughs> the legislature precludes us from doing that we can't okay. unilaterally we can't unilaterally or if we do I guess we have to pay them an obscene amount of money so we can't do that we can't number do that. two we have to deal with the constituents like that are in your district who um, there's no incentive for her to complain it's not that they've missed 300 they've missed 3,000 well, just 2,700 people haven't I know called. Ms. Wagner missed it but I promise you I'm getting I, I agree and that's <laughs> wonderful that she took the time to come here but we need to find out what that as Commissioner Lober mentioned what that number is of the people that just take this as and remember this company uh, caused us to go back and assess almost a 40% increase. They exercised the contract. So we need to incentivize people to contact our office and the way to do that is provide them a share of, uh, of that missed amount. That is the only way we're going to find out what that true uh, number will be. So if, and listen, it, I don't remember what the number was, whether it was 20 or $25, uh, but either way, there needs to be that, um, incentive for them to call up and, and complain and remember these are verified this isn't a complaint you can't call up and say i'd like my twenty dollars this has to be verified we so can research that part still even if we make this motion we can we can figure out a lot of those details still right that's what that's the only place i didn't spend a lot of time in that and you know there has to be there has to okay. be some stick we're, if we say we'll give you till the 20th and we're going to do the exact same thing we're already doing <laughs> can, that's can not we, a threat can we be ready to do this on the 20th but come back next meeting with how we're going to implement it there it's the, madam chair may, may i, I punt know, to, I know, I know, I know. to commissioner lover this I was can, initially I his be totally idea i'm just with I'm so just, but that's yeah okay all right a, a couple thoughts um First, the, the proposal, at least it was, as it was phrased when I introduced the item months back, was 20 going to the, the rate payer if they call and an additional five if they report it online. And again, this only applies to verified missed pickups. So up to 25, 20 by phone or five online because frankly it saves us staff time and having to deal with it uh, by fielding a call. As, as far as the number that was suggested by Commissioner Tobai of, of 100, I would just be clear that if that's the trigger, that if it falls to 98 the next month, that we not obviate the program and do away with it. It is in once we hit 100 until further direction or, or further order of the, of the commission. Beyond that, and I, I don't necessarily subscribe to the same level as Commissioner Tobia does, but I, I'm also somewhat cynical and I understand that it's certainly a possibility that, that certain entities might be inclined if there's going to be a service failure to target those districts in which the commissioner has been perhaps least favorable to them. And I'm not saying that's happening here, but Commissioner Tobias, if that is a concern of yours, I would support, in addition to specifying a countywide number of verified missed pickups, if you want to keep 100, so be it, to have a second number that, that either or would trigger it. So you could say, I don't know, 30 in any individual commission district, or 40, or 20, or whatever number you're comfortable with. So you could say if it's 100 countywide, it's triggered, or alternatively 30 in any one district. So it's not that they pile everything in D3 and say, Merry Christmas, Commissioner Tobias, now you have all the problems. Um, we've got 99 missed pickups, all of which are, are in D3. I just don't want to see that happen to you. And I, I don't know that they would do that. I would, I would hope that they wouldn't. I don't necessarily think that they would. But if you want to throw that in as a second trigger, I'm, I'm fine with that too. Mr. Zonka. 
Now, what I was going to comment on is going to sound completely out of place because there was so much discussion when I hit my button earlier. But I do have to say it just for the record and just so, <clears throat> so waste management knows it. Dina has been the most responsive individual to my office that, I mean, I'm impressed. You email back even when you shouldn't be working. So I just want to thank you. And again, I think Commissioner Lober said it, you're probably bound by the limitations you have. But you're courteous, you're professional, you're good to the residents that you have to respond to. And I, I just can't give you enough praise. Again, I realize it's out of place now because we're talking about potential motions. But I had to say that. And I just I thank you enormously. That's why it makes it really hard for me because, you know, we have a tendency to get emotional about things and we interject our personalities and our relationships and stuff. And Dean is amazing. So I just needed to, to say that. Good. Yes. I and I, again, I'm, I'm prepared to still move forward. Because I don't blame Dina for the failures of waste management. De Dina is working within the bounds of what she can do. Okay, Commissioner Smith, you're next. Do I just let me throw this out, though. I, I would like to bring this back next meeting so we can figure that out. I still have a little bit of heartburn about trying to even facilitate getting money to people who complain. Um, I don't know the cost on that for staff. I just haven't had enough time to think that through because it's the first time I've even considered it. So I. Um, not y'all's fault, but I, I haven't put a lot of thought into that. So, to pay the individuals? No, but I'm saying the penalty. I, I want to do the penalty. Just paying the individuals so part that I'm having a little bit of a hover on. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Dina, good job. Everybody else said it, so I didn't want to be remiss and think that I did, have you think that I don't think you've done a good job. And I, and I can't say that any of the, you folks have, haven't done a good job because I know you're, uh, one guy's pulled all his hair out. <laughs> so. Me? <laughs> no, you're, you're working on it. Uh, <laughs> so am I. Eden, can we, can, we, can we do this? Is this something that you think would work? We can try it. Yeah. You know, whether or not it's really effective, I can't answer that. Well, no, I, that's not the question. I just want to know legally, can we, can we do something we can like this? Do it. Um, okay. There, you know, with any new program, we will, I'm sure, hear challenges from one side or the other, but we will deal with it as it comes. Okay. I'm not in favor of it. Like I said, we already have a contract that, uh, that provides penalties. We just have to let me, people know that they can call their commissioner. That's all you need to do. Call, make a quick phone call to your local commissioner. You don't even have to be local. You can call my office. We keep tallies on that, and then we notify them. And that tally that we get goes to the county so that we get reimbursed. So maybe we need to do a better job of letting the public know that they can reach out to each and every one of us. But uh, right now, it looks like I'm the one voter out of five that's not going to support this. But I just I understand where you guys are coming from, but I wouldn't support it. I think we already have a contract in place. They're abiding by the contract. We're abiding by the contract. They're failing the contract and they're paying the price. And um, I don't know how we can incentivize them to do a better job because their jobs are on the line. Their, their bosses don't like hearing that the customers are unhappy. So they're not, they're not sitting there twiddling their thumbs because they don't care. They've got a problem and they're trying their best to fix it. And if they don't fix it, they're, they're not gonna have a job. So. That's my two cents. Mr. Um, Smith, thank you. I am in favor of penalties, guys. I just don't know how to distribute them. I just, I'm not ready to vote on how we're going to place the penalties after we receive them as far as giving them to the individual homeowners. That's the only hang up I have right now. I have a suggestion. But I am in favor of that. Let me give Commissioner Zonka first, sir, and then you're right after that. Commissioner Zonka. And I just want to say, you know, with Commissioner Smith, you know, most people don't know that their trash has been missed till the end of the day. And, and as far as calling our office, you heard the resident. I mean, most people don't have the time. They don't know who to call or they're calling their mayor or they're calling, you know, they're calling the wrong office. You know, we sometimes get, you know, forwarded messages and that sort of thing. I know when trash is missed at my place, I don't call. I just hope they come and get it the Shame next way. day. Or I know I have two days a week and I just roll it back up so my HOA doesn't get on my butt and I just wait till the next trash, usually it's just late. Usually it's just the next day. And, and I, I can be a little understanding with that. I don't like it obviously when it's missed, but 
I don't get as missed as others, you know, but the yard waste that's growing weeds because it sits there for weeks and weeks. And you know those trash trucks and those yard waste clam trucks drive past it. So yeah, the homeowner hasn't called like they're supposed to. However, you know, those drivers still see it and it's still growing its own garden in the middle of it. So, I mean, that's on Riverside Drive. So, I mean, again, I think waste management needs to do better and I don't think we should put it on the residents to have to call us to complain about it. The goal should always be to get the trash and the yard waste picked up. You know, you never want to incentivize somebody to call. However, if this makes waste management do what they have to do to make things work better, then I'm okay with that. Because they're not going to want to be penalized for it, no matter who the money's going to. Yeah. And if it's verified, we know residents can't just call randomly without some sort of proof. So, Mr. Lober. A couple thoughts. First, um, as to what Commissioner Smith said, that we have an existing contract in place. I agree. Uh, we've been abiding by it. We're not talking about any action that would cause a change to that contract. That contract remains in place regardless of how this vote goes today and regardless of how the particular motion is phrased. As far as waste management paying the price for service failures, that's in part true, but really the way to phrase it is they're paying, the operative word here is part of the price. Because we don't even know the extent of the, the issues. We've got this sheet that Commissioner Tobia beautifully constructed or had constructed that shows here, hold on, let's see. Okay, right is left and left is right on the screen. That shows the missed pickups, but we don't know if that's 30% of it, 5% of it, 90% of it. I have no idea. Folks clearly don't know where to report these missed pickups. I've encouraged folks to call solid waste so that solid waste can maintain a, a countywide uh, tally instead of any individual commission office. And solid waste can also go ahead and reach out to waste management to lobby on their behalf to get the pickup corrected. But what, what I would suggest, Commissioner Pritchett, if, if folks are amenable at this point, if this would bring you on board, let's do this. Let's go ahead. We'll have Commissioner Tobias, if he wants to be the one that makes the motion, to make the motion that effective the date that he suggested, that we implement this program and that we direct staff to come back at, at the next reasonable opportunity at a notice commission meeting, not a special meeting, to bring back their, their intention or if they don't have a clear intention, the best couple options for how to actually remit this payment or how to credit the consumer. And then you can address that. In the meanwhile, we know that they're going to be credited effective the date that, that's triggered. Uh, and we'll simply address the mechanism by which that takes place after staff has an opportunity to make their suggestions. Whether we can do it as a credit to the bill, that would be wonderful. If we can't do that and we have to cut checks, which may well be the case, um, I, I'd like to give them the opportunity to do that. And if you're concerned, we don't have to actually cause that particular portion of it to be figured out today, but we can come back and revisit that. So that's my suggestion. I, I just wouldn't hold everything on account of, of one small piece being an unknown for you if we can come back and revisit that one piece. Not whether we're going to pay the incentive, but how we pay it. Commissioner okay. Tobias? I, I think that's a decent compromise. I, I just think something needs to change. If we say you have until the 20th to do this or we're going to collect it, well, we're already collecting it. So there needs to be something changed on the 20th. And I think that if you're not comfortable, maybe staff can or maybe uh, we can bring something back. That, that deadline needs to be there. We need to find out what that real number is. Maybe you're not comfortable with $25. And here's the, here's the thing. Waste management has control of this. You see, we could charge $100 and they would have the ability to actually pick up trash and avoid that. Now, it's not going to really matter to them. Uh, Commissioner Smith said $39,000. That is one third of 1% of what the CEO made last year. So if we triple it, that is 1% of what the CEO made. And listen, I love for-profit companies, but I love for-profit companies that actually do what they are supposed to do. And the fact that they have six people here, you better believe that uh, they're worried about us exercising part of the contract. They didn't worry about that when they got out of the contract so they could charge us 39% more. But take the, that excuse that you got from Dita Ryder Hicks, we're trying to hire more people and send that to the, the, the single mother who lives and has, is not having their, 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 their trash picked up. And you know what, I, I bet you're gonna get back a, yeah, I understand they're, tr they're, they're, they're trying their hardest. I mean, it, it's, it's not working here. 
send that. Just please send that email that you got. I'll send you a copy if you didn't get it, and send that to the people that missed. We have one right here. We, we, we have a, we, I'd be more than willing to ask her what she would think of that one-page email of they're trying, and yet she lives right across from the dump. I, I, we need to do something different. We can't threaten the exact same thing we're currently doing. And, and maybe there's another alternative here. Um, I like the one that Commissioner Lober had. But again, if waste management doesn't like it, they can fix it by doing their job. The one that they promised to do when they uh, signed the contract. And remember, when it benefited them to get out of their last contract, that's the first thing they did. They jumped out of there so they could jack rates up what turned out to be 39%. And you know what? The contract allowed them to do that. I was mad initially, but that's what the former commission decided, to give them an out. Well, I'm asking us to do the same thing. It allows us to do this in the contract. Are they happy about it? No, but they signed that contract. This is a multi-billion dollar corporation. You better believe that, that they are an uh, intelligent actor, and the fact that they have six people here is probably a pretty good indication that, that they have the ability to remedy this. But if we just ask them to do it and don't change anything, you, you saw what happens here. I mean, goodness gracious, I don't want to keep on bringing this up over and over and over again. But if we don't change it, this number is going to get larger. Dina's emails are going to get longer. And this woman's trash is going to continue not to be picked up. And we're not going to know about it, uh, unfortunately. So um, I, don't know, I don't know where that puts us if, if we ask staff to bring back some opportunity, some, some uh, options at the next meeting, but we need to keep that deadline. We need to keep that number of 100, and uh, we make a decision uh, at, at, that, at that point. I, I'm good with all that, if staff can come back. I just don't know what it's gonna cost for them to get oh, the I money and try to mill the money out. Oh, That's I don't want, listen, I don't want staff to be, if, 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 if we collect 50 bucks and, and we remit 20, and it costs us ten dollars for the, you know. That's all I just want to figure absolutely, that out. Absolutely, absolutely. But again, waste manager has the ability to fix this. God forbid. I hope we don't have to do this because they yeah. have the opportunity to drop this a hundred, and we never bring this up again. And I really hope that happens. I, I'm good. I'm good with that. With if you're good with the August twentieth, because I want to keep sure. my word. If y'all are good, but I would really like for staff to come back. Let us know if we have a cost. Mr. Um, Slusher brought up some things that. That I'm just wait. I would like some input on that, and not your fault. I just didn't spend the time asking them offline before we got here, Mr. Lober. And this is really directed to Commissioner Tobias predominantly. If if you want, I'm still amenable. If you want to make a motion today, so that we will trigger these these particular actions, either upon a threshold of 100, or if you want to add a, a second trigger as an alternative, 30 per district or otherwise. Uh, and simply have the mechanism by which uh, a portion of the liquidated damages would come back and be remitted to the ratepayers. You, you can make that motion. I'll, I'll second it. It sounds like you'll probably have support for it today. Um, if you'd prefer just to wait on it, we can do that. But I, I think you've got some momentum now, and I'd hate to see you lose that uh, because we wait. Uh, it Madam Chair, I think this comes down to Dr. Zonka. If she's willing to do that, if, if, if she would rather wait with three options, the question is, do we want to talk about this for an hour next meeting? Do we really want to take the CDL drivers out there that could be picking up trash but aren't picking up right. trash? I was going to ask the exact same question. How many folks are either employed by waste management or have contracts with waste management? But the follow-up on the CDL was a good one. So the Thank question, uh, I guess, is to Dr. Zonka, do you want to institute the penalty now or talk about the possibilities of instituting the penalties at next meeting? Well, it depends on if you want full commission buy-in as far as the deadline. If you're going to change the deadline, it doesn't matter if the penalty is in place because we're still going to do the penalty. So I'm, I'm fine either way because we're going to institute. You have the will of the board up here to institute the penalty. But as far as logistics and how we implement that, that's up to staff. If the penalty, if we all agree that there's going to be a penalty by August 20th, then that, that's not going to change from this meeting to the next. So I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to move forward Man. any way which you guys I'd are. I'd like to. Because we can talk about details after as far as how staff, ha has, how staff is going to handle it. 
because the payout amount to the consumer could be less the cost to the county. That's fair. So, and that that's how you Absol word that. Absolutely. Because totally if it's seven dollars a patient, a person, <laughs> it's a patient. Oh, yeah. Stop so, calling me doctor. You're messing me up. <laughs> if it's seven or nine dollars a person, then then that's the cost to the county. So, if if you want Commissioner Tobias, and again, feel free to phrase it however you'd like. But if you you want to skip the trigger, and just say effective immediately or effective the first month that service failures hit whatever threshold you want, that your motion would then be to direct staff to uh, seek all available contractual remedies in the form of liquidated damages for service failures from that point until further direction of the board. And in the meanwhile, that you will just, you, you, your motion contemplates directing staff additionally to come back to the commission with options for how to share a portion of the liquidated damages with the rate payers uh, who, would be in, who would be reporting the actual service failures um, pending verification of, of their reported failed pickups. You're not going to implement August 20. How, however you want to do it. You can implement it August 20th. Okay. I'll support you. You can implement it today. I'll support you however you want to do it. I, I, I can vote if we do August 20 because I gave my word. Do you have a dollar amount? I mean, do you have, I mean. Oh, well, here's what we can, we can say now. And the, you know, that tentatively the intention for the commission is to, to share twenty dollars less processing or administrative costs for phone reported missed pickups that are verified, or twenty five for electronically reported uh, missed pickups that are verified using the county's online system that I referenced less earlier. Less administrative costs, yeah. Yeah, less administrative costs, and then the maximum amount that any rate payer would be refunded in the course of any year is is what they pay toward the actual service. So they can't receive more of a credit than the full cost that they pay over the course of, okay. of a calendar year. Sounds good. I, like I mean, that. we shouldn't give someone 10,000 so bucks. Why don't you make, you make that, that motion because you said it all? Is it, if you want me to make the motion, that's fine. Commissioner Tobias, if I you second, want the honors, yeah, God I'll, bless I'll you. I'll second that motion. Okay. With it being August 20th? With it being August 20th okay. or not, Commissioner Tobias? I'm fine Up with Up to that. you. I mean, I, uh, Okay, it, I, it seems like we got August 20th as a buy-in on this one then. So be it, that's, that's what the motion yeah. contemplates, second hold? Yeah. Um, or Tobiah was the second. You can be the third. <laughs> okay, I have a motion. Oh, you did it for me. Thank you. I'll sit back and join it. Did you get all that, clerk? Okay. Oh, she's like, yeah. <laughs> you will us. go back and watch. <laughs> okay. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Pass this 4 1 the Commissioner Smith in objection. Thank you. And thank you guys for all you do. I know it's tough. So, I really you. do like you, Dina. Yeah. And just as a heads up to the higher-ups in waste management, if you guys can her, that's a way to just invite even more ire from the commission. So keep her, please. Okay, we're going to um, move into public comment. But before we do, I see Miss Abby out there. Would you like to come forth and just address us? Um, we are thankful to um, have you come on board. And congratulations, and we would love to hear from you for a minute. Can from we you. give her three minutes? <laughs> She's an attorney, you better limit her to three. I'll be brief. Um, I, thank you so much. I am so excited for this opportunity. Um, I want you to know, I want each of you to know, that this is my dream job. I am all in for you. I've only been here a couple years, but I love the staff. I love Brevard County, and I love our residents. So I'm here to serve you and the residents, and I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so good much. Choice. Hold on a second. Commissioner um, Zonko would like to say something. I was going to save this for a private conversation. I hope you don't hold my bias towards Absolutely. the first candidate against me. No. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't fight for my candidate. But you are amazing. We had a great interview, and I hope you know we can continue with a good relationship. Absolutely. Thank me you so Eden much. Me and Eden did, and I didn't support in-house then because I wanted more options. So it's nothing personal. You're yeah. talented. You're brilliant, and I look forward to working with you. I look forward to serving you and the residents. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Now, you. did you squeal a little bit when we were voted? <laughs> yes. You should have been upstairs. <laughs> should, that's why I'm a little raspy, I'm afraid. All right. Good but luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> We are moving into uh, public comment. I have Mr. Slasher. 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 Sounds a lot more aggressive. <laughs> Slasher sounds I always say hi, Nathan, every time I see him. So Nathan I'm bad with last name. Nathan Slasher, ACC, Allen, Allen, Titusville. Um, this is more of a technical suggestion that staff may be better at than you guys. Um, but the giant board behind you, it's been brought to my attention that people want to see what you're seeing on the board. So like when Parks and Recs gives you options, 
You guys are up here saying A, B, C, A, B, C. Nobody knows what A, B, C is. Unless, agenda. I'm sorry? It was in the agenda. Yes, we could print it out, but the people who are in here can't see it. Oh. Now, I just saw this for the first time today. So I was going to suggest something for public comments, but seeing this, if we could use that more often, like I said, it's been brought up, and then it was brought up again to me today during this meeting. So I just want to suggest that we use this to make more transparency. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we are moving into board reports. County manager. No report. County attorney. Two very quick items. I just wanted to let you know, in case you missed it in your email yesterday, the employees have submitted another offer of settlement at $172,500. Um, they owe about $350,000, so we're not recommending settlement unless the board tells us otherwise. Um, Waters, Mark, uh, we did have a summary judgment against the county. We are proceeding with appeal. I think you have an email about that. I don't see any other route to go at this point. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Lober. Do I even dignify the, uh, the Oblay thing with a response? No. Okay, I'm going to go with a, uh, a solid no on that one with a suggestion that maybe, you know, save the billable hour and, and not submit a, a subsequent settlement proposal. The settlement proposal that I, I think folks would be amenable to up here is payment in full of, of the amount that's, that's owed. Um, can't do that. Save yourself the time. Save yourself the billable hour. I just want to take a moment uh, of personal privilege here to, uh, to let folks know that the reason that I had to appear telephonically for the first and only time for the last meeting, thank God, has a, a happy ending, as it were. So my little guy that had his, um, his spleen and a lobe of his liver removed. I think we, we got, need to tell him it's your puppy. Yeah, my puppy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love this dog. He's, my, uh, he's basically a, a quadruped that might as well be my kid. I don't have any human children, so... He's alter ego? No, he's a lot nicer than I am. A lot nicer. And oftentimes quite a bit smarter as well. Uh, but he, we got the pathology back on him. Everything came back benign, which is shocking, but I am beyond elated. Uh, we had a, the wife and I had a lot of sleepless nights while we were waiting for that to come back and while he was recovering. But uh, I, I can tell you, regardless of what bad may happen or transpire between now and Certainly the, uh, the next while here, it, it, it's meaningless in comparison to the good news that we got. So for the folks that, uh, that either said a little prayer for him or kept him in their thoughts, thank you. Um, I'm not going to say that that didn't have something to do with it. Uh, it certainly was appreciated, but thank you guys. Um, today was a fun meeting. I think we got a lot done. Um, it's always fun having a little back and forth up here. Uh, it kind of gives me a little, uh, little feel of what it's like being uh, in, the, in the courtroom kind of like courtroom light, having this adversarial relationship sometimes with some of the folks up here, even, you know, even if we get along after the meetings are, are concluded. But um, thanks. It's been, it's been fun uh, getting through the issues with you guys, and I look forward to many more days of doing the same. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Tobiah. No report, Madam Chair. Commissioner Smith. No report. Commissioner Zonka. It'll be quick, I promise. Um, I just wanted to thank county staff for coming through once again, Mary Ellen and others that came through for, we had a request from Aging Solutions because um, they've received more wards of the state. And Danielle, my chief of staff, has sort of been the lead on that. And we were able to collect more toiletries for these folks. And these folks have nobody. So I just have to say kudos to those that help load Danielle's truck today. And I have another trunk load. Um, Tom Nider called me on the phone and said, He's with our fire department. Um, he's a district chief. He called me. He said, why didn't you call me and tell me you had needs? Because every year he comes through at, at uh, Christmas time for these folks. So anytime, we will always take donations, and they always need them. And they're so appreciative. The, the people that run that uh, show over there are always appreciative as well. So I just wanted to thank Tom Nider, the BCFR folks, for once again coming through for our county staff who comes through every year at Christmas and who's come through again uh, Christmas in July, right? This really holds true for these folks. And, and again, these, these guys have nobody. So it means a lot to our office, and it means a lot to these folks. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I have no report. So I'm going to call this meeting adjourned. What 
The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.